faithfulness in this house a finger that has taken us from january till december we acknowledge you oh god you're the mighty god we give you all the praise we give you all the praise we give you all the praise hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord I'd like you to walk around just celebrate someone and come back to your seat walk around greet someone hug someone tell them it's good to see you at the last service for the year Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to celebrate Jesus for the last service. The very, very last service. All the things. The last service for the year. Hallelujah. God bless you. I welcome everyone. Uh, I'll not be preaching tonight. Really, I think the worship team and the media have done everything. We give them kudos for everything. I just want to encourage us tonight. I was contemplating on what I would share just to encourage us. You would call it a valedictory sermon for the year. And the Lord laid just one word in my heart. And I think it's important that... Um, we close on this note for the year we have seen the hand of God he told us that this would be for us as a family the year of the rain and we have seen his faithfulness you cannot imagine the things that God has done around the nation we give him all the praise just one scripture Matthew 11 Matthew 11 Blessed be the name of the Lord twenty eight Matthew eleven the twenty eighth verse Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden let's read on together and i will give you rest it says take my yoke upon you and lean of me for i am meek and lonely in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls he said for my yoke is easy and my burden is light i want to admonish us tonight very briefly on the subject of peace um is one attribute that is grossly lacking in the world today when you put on your television all you hear is very bad negative news this person bombing this nation this person doing this when you come to our own nation all kinds of stories and um, if we do not learn how a believer is supposed to live especially in our world today we will depress ourselves we will destroy ourselves are we together now our hospitals are full of people who have inflicted themselves with needless diseases 
the rate high blood pressure used to be a disease for old people but right now you find teenagers in the hospital with high blood pressure stroke and all kinds of things the turbulence of living in today's world is catching up with so many people depression swallowing people up there are so many people who beginning from the first of this month probably will not rest until the first of january they are hoping to get the money to buy the cow for christmas the rice some of you are depressing yourself over your transport <coughs> excuse me your transport fare back home and all kinds of things listen let me tell you something peace is one of the cardinal representations of the presence of the kingdom the bible says the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink are we together but in what righteousness peace this peace is not just a state of quietness it's a state of rest that's what jesus said he will give he said come on to me and i will give you rest it's from the word shalom it's not just a a state of non-disturbance is is a state of rest the psalmist put it in a very beautiful way he says um he restores my soul he says he leads me beside the still waters the more of a leader you become the more you will see the need for peace in your life and the need to be an advocate of that peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is let your love increase lord make us your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instrument the first revelation i want to give you about peace and a state of rest is that it is a choice peace has nothing to do with what is happening around you listen listen peace has nothing to do with the external environment there are so many people who tell you i don't have peace because i don't have money how can i have peace i don't have peace because i'm not married i don't have peace because there's no admission i don't have peace because i have a carryover or no job or no child um satan understands that men are carnally minded are we together he knows that the impulses of the carnal man is based on the things around him and so he takes advantage of the happenings in our lives all right and then brings us to a point where we cannot enjoy this shalom this restfulness there's so many people worried you see young people just sit like this and you ask them what they say life and you're wondering what is making that person so depressed what is life the only set of people we believe should have peace are those who die that's why we tell them rest in not in joy not in love because we have informed ourselves that peace is only for dead people once you are alive in this world we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is strange for a man to be a peaceful person peace is not quietness peace is not lack of noise no peace is a state of rest a settled state of rest that is based on the revelation of who god is and the integrity of his person hallelujah believe me you have mastered the art of living 
if you sustain a technology in the spirit to generate peace regardless of situations and circumstances at that point you are guaranteed to live long everyone say peace one of the greatest blessings that jesus brings to us is peace not just salvation but peace you can have all the money in the world and with it will come multiply troubles there are people who were more peaceful poor than they are now millionaires but cannot sleep are we together now have you not read what solomon said he said here the conclusion of the matter he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul he said but this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments then he says this is the whole duty of man it's too much in this life to disturb your peace every 24 hour in your life is full of enough trouble to jeopardize your life you don't have to be a bad person the world we live in from the person who greets you in the morning to the one you quarrel with before sleeping there are so many people who cannot sleep you ask them why they say kai but i'm, I'm a lenient person abi they are treating me too much in this life this is what they are thinking about there are ideologies that have robbed us of the peace of god the bible says that peace surpasses all understanding it's not scientific you don't calculate it is part of the true representations of a spiritual man a spiritual man has sustained a system in the spirit to be peaceful a state of rest Kai, the way people worry the way people depress themselves is a dangerous thing god gave me this word that in this season it's important for us to come once again into this covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken nothing that is an emergency enough to rob you of that joy and that restfulness that comes in knowing who Christ is hallelujah our world is full of worry everybody say worry Jesus dedicated a whole chapter Matthew chapter 6 talking about worry the bible says do not worry listen do you know why people lose their peace what to eat what to wear are we together and all the mundane cares of life from marriage to children to money to lack of it to too much of it to human beings there's too much to rob us of our peace husbands have lost relationships with their wives because of the cares of this world lack of peace many homes today have become habitations of worry and stress the tension that you see in the life of people is too much but there is a system there is a technology in the spirit that can keep a man restful May that be your experience listen i'm telling you if you are not a man and a woman of peace you are not walking in the experience of the kingdom it has nothing to do with whether you have money in your pocket or not many of us have tied our peace to naira and kobo so when you check and you find hundred thousand when pastor femi gave the testimony of the millions coming i saw the relief it's not your money but just the the fact that money is available gave a lot of us that sigh of relief and i felt very disappointed if you allow money to define your peace or otherwise you make yourself a slave to satan how many people smile only at the end of the month have you seen the way people are happy when they are slotting their atm even if there's nothing just the consciousness that i'm around money it's a very demonic thing listen listen this is the last teaching for the year it's a very demonic way to live you cannot tie your peace to anything in time because it will kill you fast your peace must be tied to a person not things 
your peace must be tied to a person his name is jesus oh i like job come on the bible tells us that job when everything whether he had it or not of course he was human but the bible lets us know that job the, the bible says he sinned not with his mouth When you check your CGPA and you see that everything works out fine, then you have peace. Look, look at how worry is killing so many people. It's one of Satan's greatest arsenal in our day. Worry, anxiety, depression. Hear what Jesus said. John 14. John 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? John 14. Verse 27. John 14, 27. Can we read it? One, two, read. Not a bank account. Listen. Peace. I live with you. So that you are not confused not peace that comes from money he said my peace there is a type that god gives there is a type that the world gives the peace you get when you receive salary the peace you get when your insecurities are gone people consult witches and wizards today because of lack of confidence in god insecurity has depressed men insecurity causes lack of peace he said my peace i give to you it says not as the world give it that means there is a kind of peace you get in this world peace that is tied to things are we together now and so there's depression everywhere you come and you find out that there's no light oh never eh? and you are angry and the devil says that's right I have found out that circumstances can control the peace gauge of this person. And somebody just annoys you. You receive a very, very nasty text from somebody. And while you are meditating upon it, you hear that, ah, mama is sick at home. And you sit down and say, Kai, what is this life about? And Satan says, this is it. This is exactly the state I want. Because every time, righteousness, peace, and joy cohabit, the kingdom must find expression there. And so Satan knows that every time I can take one of these factors away, it's impossible for that person to experience the kingdom. Do you not know that with all your depression, five minutes without your breath, and there's nothing to talk about again. Truly, human beings are really foolish. The word of God gives us wisdom. You find out the way we depress ourselves over several things. I once met a gentleman and I saw him so worried. I said, why? He said, at my age, my father had a car. Hi! And so, <laughs> and so I told him, I said, so what does that mean? He said, can you imagine? Ah, I can't make myself a slave like that. Even if I'm going to think, let me think of something noble constructed metals stopping you from sleeping in the night is that not idolatry are we together now think of the things that depress us brothers and sisters and you find out that at the root of them do you know that most of the things that are free in life they are the most important things the things that God knows that money cannot buy, he gave you freely. The air you breathe, the blessings of relationships, the gift of salvation. Most of the things we depress ourselves about, the truth is we can live without them. We have chosen based on an ideology to pressure ourselves. Look at the lovely sister that came to share about her phone getting bad. How many people will not sleep today? if arm robbers take well not arm, arm robbers don't steal phone I'm, that a thief anybody just carries your phone 
this gets missing and you see them moving around where is my phone they wake up by two they wake up by three they go to zaria city i must find out who did this peace jesus said my peace i live with you koinonia not as the world gives you frustrate satan when you have found a system that does not disrupt your peace you have found a system that maintains your rest hallelujah when satan sees that nothing in time can affect this state of restfulness we hate because we do not have the peace of god we depress ourselves we are sick sick and sick and sick people going to the hospital the doctors cannot find anything because they are depressing themselves you you are so depressed you fall down and not even know you're falling down somebody says stand up and you say you mean i fell down what were you thinking about at what age i refuse to allow anything in time it's a choice I reject it I refuse to allow anything in time corrupt that restful state it's a state I've found that is only possible in Christ a state of rest you will never know this peace if you are outside of Christ there is a revelation that brings you to this peace let me tell you what that revelation is if God does not open a door it cannot be opened ah. and if God opens that door it cannot be closed I have learned by experience that worry does not solve anything it only complicates your life and your problems how many ladies you see them 25 depressed why husband what is that you are so passionate and depressed over a husband the day he comes you are even annoyed that he has come do you know there is a way you can worry over it does not bless you even when it comes the worry is too much even the miracle you no longer celebrate it jesus said my peace i live with you give it to us again media my peace john 14 27 my peace there is a kind that he gives It says not as the world gives let not your heart be what what is the opposite of peace a troubled heart he said let not your heart in other words permit it not choose to refuse your heart from being troubled he said neither let it be afraid these are the things that choke the peace of god fear fear the fear of the future how many young people are afraid of the future what will my life become you are afraid of getting admission you are now afraid of graduating you are afraid of getting a job you are afraid of not getting one ah. he leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Anxiety is something that is, is okay with the natural man. It's part of our build up as natural men. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Right? anxiety anxiety has depressed people it is that lack of peace anxiousness anxious about everything oh i want to know what tomorrow holds i want to know what this holds and we we go into all kinds of ungodly strategies because we are afraid how many parents have gone 
to make sacrifices for their children tell me what the future of my child will be will he be great will he not be great tell me this and they say okay go and bring a cow go and bring a ram i want to know i'm afraid let me know if tell me if i will live up to 10 years Abba. there is a state of restfulness that when you wake up in the morning you give him all the praise and you say thank you lord for peace you hear a news that is depressing and you say lord in all things i cannot explain what has happened but lord i thank you i i may not know the details but one thing i know is that you are faithful you are faithful for the things you've done for me tirido, do, do, tirido, for the life you've given Draw me close to you. What more can I say? How can I there's too much anxiety in our world we are afraid we are insecure right we are troubled over nothing watch students when result is about to come out something that will be pasted and you will know anxiety makes people to be roaming around they see a lecturer and they are good afternoon sir did i pass just be patient something that in the next 10 minutes will be pasted there and will be left there anxiety do you know anxiety can preempt you and open up seasons that was not supposed to be open anxiety can make you do things you can go ahead of your destiny to your detriment of God that surpasses all understanding and people look at you if you are a man of peace you must be strange because people look at you and say ah is it not you they said your father died and you say well I cried but to him be all the glory say no 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 let's go and find out we must trace the root of this and you say God is faithful <sighs> you are rejoicing and they tell you one million naira has entered your account you say I rejoice but it doesn't make any difference I am still restful and God says so the one million you say well I'm happy it doesn't change anything and the devil says where in the world do I get this person how come you have a constant state of rest regardless of what happens you are in a relationship with a guy you are happy planning your wedding and he looks and says I'm not doing it and while you cry he said Lord you are faithful I may not have him but I have you give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you listen many of us do not know the value and the, the treasure of having Jesus Christ. I know we, we profess it, we claim we know, but the truth is, it's not in our lives. The, our, our unrestfulness shows Jesus there is something that is higher than him in our life. Listen, if I give you one million, Sam, right? Let me use money so that we understand. If I give you one million, Sam, and you see five naira falling on the ground will you leave the one million to pick it if you leave the one million to pick it what does that mean it's impossible for you to say i value this that's what that's what is responsible for the turbulence in our lives you have the greatest gift and you throw him away and you are looking at other things that are mundane because in your mind although we claim through our songs that he's everything 
but the truth of the matter is that our passion and obsession about things of a lesser value show that they are out they are truly the gods in our life when a man has jesus christ listen please hear me i know we live in a society that thinks what i'm saying is old school when a man has the christ and the revelation of the operation of the kingdom you have the greatest gift in your life brothers and sisters whether in plenty or in little you are a man of peace how many gentlemen are about to be bad fathers because their joy and their peace is tied to things around the moment the man is promoted everybody receives the joy the moment he fights with somebody in the office everybody is going to receive a share of that anger that's a bad life i don't have enemies in my life believe me i cannot hate a man i know this sounds arrogant it's not the natural joshua selman have i'm human but i cannot that quality is no longer in me the light of god has consumed me i found a key love never fails when was the last time they taught you this when they were teaching you on an antidote against failure did they ever teach you that love never what does never mean there is no possibility hmm. love so i live a very restful life if i go back and i find my place burned to ashes i will look at it and say wow the only pain is i'll say i did not carry my books where i write the visions in my life but in five minutes i'm rejoicing satan has lost the art of wearing me i i humiliate him with my peace hmm. are we together i can sit down with a cup of gary and rejoice the same way I will sit down with Turkey. I can sit down in a five-star hotel and rejoice the same way I will sit down in a mat. If that is not your case, you are already in deception. The devil is about to hack your life into pieces. I will never, no, 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 no. Whether I'm, watch, I'm wearing a watch of 100,000 or wearing a rubber watch of 50 naira, it does not make any difference as far as peace is concerned are we together whether you are wearing a shirt of one million or you are wearing a shirt of ten naira it doesn't make any difference never allow the things around you to define your state of rest you are not a christian you are not a true christian i'm telling you this when that happens i have found life i have found peace I'm not teaching you to be irresponsible but I am telling you you must start living when you learn to be peaceful that nothing in time can disrupt that restfulness whether in tears or in joy whether in plenty or in little you have learned to maintain a spiritual equilibrium there is a there is a, a spiritual buffer nothing will take you out of that state you are a true spiritual man. Some of us are probably seated right now, depressed. I want to travel tomorrow. God knows I need 2,000. What I have is 500. Because of one five, you will not sleep. And your not sleeping will not bring it. You see the trouble? Worry was never designed to bring solutions. It was designed to depress you. If I don't trust myself, why can't I trust? If you don't trust yourself, trust God. My peace. I move up. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed. Every 24 hours, I watch people and I am shocked at their, at their ideology. Why do people think this way? why can't they be peaceful why won't you choose to be peaceful listen some of you look at you're not even so old but look look at the way your life is depressed worry and anger and hatred always cynical always on the negative side 
talking about everything that is not working in your life and the life of people why don't you change what you see why don't you change what you see i don't see negative things all i see is the faithfulness of god in my life all i see is the mercy of god it is the goodness of god in my life god has been good to me if he never blesses me in this life he does not owe me anything i owe him my life and eternity that's how to live that's how to live you kept ten thousand naira. i got missing you are crying you are yelling you are quoting scripture the prayers you would not have prayed to bring you into intimacy you pray for two hours and you start checking oh god your word said even god who called the dead and call the things that be not as though they were lord me i'm saying this thing is my own it must come i'm telling you it's not the prayer of faith it's the prayer of selfishness and idolatry The greatest gift I have in my life, listen, is not the anointing. The greatest gift I have in my life is not money. The greatest gift I have in my life is not people. The greatest gift I have in my life is the presence of Jesus. Ah, in life and in death. The worst that can happen to me is that I will die. You will cry for seven days and say, ah, ah he taught us about long life. It doesn't matter. I'm God. <laughs> And at the end of it, there's peace. Many of us are already on our way to produce bad families because of depression. What is wrong? No money, how can I be happy? Are you not seeing what is happening in Nigeria? Buhari's government is this and that and that. How is it providing for your needs? Have you not read, my God shall supply? Leave that one, Jare. We are talking about real issues now. You are not a Christian. A true believer, listen, a true believer is one who has staked his life on God's word. I believe the word of God to death, to death, to death. I believe the word of God. My life revolves around it. I will never allow anything in this life to depress me. It does not have that ability. If I'm told today that any of my loved one is dead, God forbid, I will cry. But in it, I will get up. And the only song that will come out of my lips is the song of his faithfulness. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful. We are saying faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Listen, create a limit for the effect of the things in this life as far as your relationship with God is concerned. The presence of Jesus is more than gold, it's more than a billion dollars the presence of jesus is more than koinonia is more i will give up koinonia one thousand times for the presence of jesus i will give up anything and i mean it in this life no i will give give aside every accomplishment and everything for the presence of jesus that's the gift i have I, you hear people say, ah, my reputation is at stake. I don't even have one. Ah, I don't have one. I'm telling you, my reputation is his reputation. I'm too young to kill myself with that kind of ideology. I have no reputation of my own. Help me, sir. Thank you. I want you to get a revelation tonight inside and outside as we wrap up this year make a choice that for the rest of my god-given life i choose peace i choice no matter what happens in my life i made that choice i choose to be happy 
people see you and say you are always laughing then they come to your house and find out that the only thing there is water there's no gary and they say so why are you laughing what's the laughter for the laughter is because you have come into oneness with one who is greater than anything that can come. See, let me tell you, please, please. Lose the, the affection you have for things. You hear me say this all the time. You must get to a point in your life, Koinonia, where nothing in time has the ability to steal away the presence of Jesus. When John, or no, not John now, when Peter was about to die, they were about to kill the body. Right? They put him on a cross and he said, no, they cannot crucify me the same way they crucified my Savior. Look at a man. He said, turn me upside down. I am not worthy to be crucified that way. What did these people know? That in the midst of their depression, Paul will write a letter encouraging people and Paul will say, I'm in chains. In chains. A man in chains telling people, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith walk in patience. In chains. You are not in chains. Yet, we are depressed. Please, I want you to, I want you to weary Satan with your passion for Jesus Christ. Weary Satan with your passion for the things of God. Oh, I wanted to give you 10,000. I no longer will give you. Say, to God be the glory. And he said, what kind of person are you? Is it that you don't get angry? You have sustained a system. For as long as God is alive, I remain peaceful. My depression will start the day someone can dethrone him. And then at that point, I know that my life is no longer secure. Listen, the oldest man on earth today is not up to 120 years. So what is the vanity? Are we together? The vanity in this life that makes us to get up. You are pursuing car. You are pursuing jeep. You are pursuing this. You are pursuing that. Oh, they said in the village, I'm not successful. Let me prove to them. Who cares? Are they successful? They in the village, are they successful? They said they don't marry fast in our family. That's their cup of tea, frankly speaking. See, learn, learn to, learn to ignore Satan. It's one way to conquer him. Ignore his proposals and you will step into a state of rest. Someone looks and says, have you gotten the admission? Say, why now? Ah, say, God is faithful. I know that he makes all things beautiful in his time. They say, oh, forget that, you know, you are disappointing us. And you, you leave them away. And when you go, the devil will say, think on these things. And you say, no, the Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, if there be a good report, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. This unemployment, why are we like this? And then you turn to your friend and say, Why are we suffering like this? The friends say, Attire, oh, Naso Nigeria, they know you are, you are thinking like a non Christian. The peace of God. See, let me tell you what will happen if you are living in peace. Men must hate you. Because, you see, there is a popular saying that misery likes company. When people are frustrated, they try to look for those who are like them so that they can form a team. We, the committee of humiliated people. And the moment you refuse it, they interpret it as pride. What are you saying? Are you not older than us? At least me, I'm 28. You, you are 32. You are not depressed. You are not joining us in this. I'm, I'm not joining. I'm not a party to all of this. Five years after graduating, no job. You won't come. Let's discuss this thing. Say, no, I'm not a party to it. Are you willing to be that different? To ignore the mockery and maintain the peace of the kingdom? There's too much depression in our world. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. 
the person who is depressed humanly speaking does not even have any guarantee whether he will wake up the next day yet he's thinking people have accident under the me thank you depression makes them to begin to hallucinate they think the road is this way whereas it's this way they go and bash into a tree and die say i i thought i saw the bend this way frustration I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence, Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence, Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember a man whose car had accident when he came and saw the car burning he fell down there and died if that guy gets to heaven and i'm jesus this is the first thing i'm going to do i'll say what brought you here and he said i died I said, of what he said car i'll say go back he must go back for that you must win at least a thousand souls <laughs> oh no come on you don't die and enter the gates of heaven if i'm jesus you must go back and win souls one by one not general one by one you die because your car caught fire they stole your clothes from january you are still remembering it now see listen do you let me tell you something anything you hold on to you are telling god this is the limit of my life don't ever lift me beyond this limit because at this point this has become my god i love him you never hear me pray all those nonsense prayers oh god why me why all of these things why eh? oh god won't you won't you no 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 I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. this anxiety and this rage right have you seen friends do this I, I believe you don't do it um christians should not do that but there are friends that do that um they deliberately look for trouble they keep saying things and instigating anger and then they laugh there are people who if they laugh at you there is a way they laugh at you do, do you have such kind of people in your life oh my goodness they laugh at you in a way that you, you don't you, you 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 try to check is it that i'm stupid am i a clown what is the meaning of all this if you live your life like that there are many of those kinds of people around the world you will hate yourself and you will translate that hatred to every other person around you i love myself god knows i love myself I've, I've said it again and again here that philosophy of hanging yourself even if i were not born again it would never happen to hang myself no i'd rather die in a sleep but not to hang myself who buys the rope <laughs> me go to the market and buy a rope to hang myself <laughs> say i choose to be peaceful shout it i choose to be peaceful i make up my mind to be a person of peace go home with this mindset and see how you will discomfort a lot of people because for some of you they are waiting for you there is a part of the gist that has been it's like a pie they left it for you they are hoping that you come and they say come and tell us your version of the suffering in nigeria and they say well i 
I have just one thing to say. God is faithful. And I say, please, please, let's be real. We are also Christians. He said, this is my reality. I mean it. I'm, I'm not playing games. And then they get angry. Right? People always get angry when you don't conform. I once met a woman who was angry, said that she's been barren for a number of years. And... Um, this was woman. She said, I went to the hospital. They said I'm okay. They said I'm okay. It's my husband that knows what A and B and C and, and you know I don't want to. He has this whole medical this in and all of that. He's the one. Blah 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 blah. From his father's side, from this and that. And I knew that this woman will not carry a child for a long time with this bad attitude. There is, the kingdom cannot come because there is no peace. It's an equation. There must be righteousness. There must be peace and there must be joy. When these three cohabit. It grants access. It's like a spiritual code. Hallelujah. And I looked at the woman. I said, Madam, the issue is not to throw blames and say it's your husband. Two have become one. That's what the Bible says. If he gets money now, will you say it's his money or will you say it's our money? See that? And I encourage her and pray with her. I give unto you. I don't know what you are going through right now. But let me tell you, I don't want to know. One thing I know is that your way out must be the way of peace. Depression will never bring you solution. Are we together? Worry and discussing issues with people who cannot help you will not bring you out. Jesus said, John 14, please, 27, my peace I give to you my peace i give unto you the bible says one of the names you will be called is the prince of peace not the prince of worry look at jesus on the cross going through the pains of the nail and then he looks at john and says john behold your mother mother behold your son what kind of peace is that a 33 year old man naked on the cross he would have been angry. Look at Stephen when they were about to stone him. He looked into heaven. The only guy that did what Jesus did was advocated forgiveness for the people. That's a state of peace. May God make you a man and a woman of peace, I'm telling you. In plenty, it does not change you. In not plenty, it does not change you. Right? When people annoy you and instead of you boiling around, you just find a song of melody. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a song to the Lord Singing I love you Lord Singing I love you Lord Singing I love you Lord Some of us are going to be going home. Let me tell you what some of you will meet in your house. Poverty like never before. It's not a prophecy. Some of you, that's, that's the truth. You will go home and they will tell you, they've not paid workers for months. And then you can choose to join them in the depression or be an instrument of peace. And say, look, I know that things are not going all right now. But I tell you, a day will come when we will rejoice in this house. They say, where is that day? We are talking of now, now. Some of you, the moment your parents see you, they will be angry because they are thinking of school fees. And you tell them, no, God is faithful. Right? Some of us are going back to our loved ones. And we may not have anything much in our hands to go and bless them at home and we are depressed. It should never be so. You choose peace. Never allow Satan depress you. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us tonight. 
I'm going to prophesy and bless us for the year. But I want everyone here, those listening outside, let nothing be so serious in this life such as to disrupt your peace. There is a childlikeness you must have if you want to live into this world. Some of us are too matured for God to use us. We are too, we are too bossy. We are too old. We are not childlike enough. I choose to be a child before his presence. I will be a child with my children and my grandchildren. I will still remain a child in his presence. To tremble at his word. Nothing is too serious in life to depress me. Nothing is too serious in life to make me hate people and get depressed all around. No joy, no peace, no. I teach you the art of living. I teach you the way winners live. The key is to hand over everything to God. I'm rounding up. I know you think you are born again, but let me tell you, when worry still kills you, you are not truly born again. There is a part of you that has not been surrendered to him. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You gave him your joy. You gave him your spiritual life. You gave him your prayer life. But your financial life, you left away from him. And that's where the devil is using to kill you. Because you've not handed it over. We're going to do a handover ceremony. Where you will take every aspect of your life and say, God, I'm tired. If it's based at, I would de this marriage issue will kill me. This job issue will kill me. This barrenness issue, I hand it over. Listen, he said, come on to me. All ye that are what? Weary and heavy laden. What did he say I will give you? Rest. Do you have it? Do you have that rest, Koinonia? Do you have that rest today? If you have it, it will tell in your life. If you have it, it will tell in your lack of desperation for mundane things. Oh, when will this come? Oh, when will this? No, 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 no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I can wait. I can wait. There is no hurry about it. I can I can wait for tomorrow to come. Ah no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I just can't wait. Why? Why? The only thing I cannot wait for is anything that has to do with the kingdom. Every time I get up on Fridays when I'm around, I, I almost cannot wait for evening because I want to be able to bless the people any other thing that is not direct so winning no i can't be that desperate about it i can wait can you wait for the car to come answer me some of you can't wait can you wait for the car to come can you wait for the husband to come can you wait for the wife to come can you wait for the promotion to come all the days of my appointed time i will until my change come If you force a door to open that God did not open, it will open, but it will open and kill you. Oh, I choose to wait. I choose to wait. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful, not in your time, in his time. He has the clock, right? And if you will wait for him, he will beautify your life. Some of you cannot wait to get into ministry. That's why you will die like a chicken. The first person you prayed for, they beat you and say, don't come around our house again. Because God is saying, wait. He said, no, my blood is hot. Calm down. Calm down. I choose to wait. I choose to experience that peace. There are three prayer points we are going to pray desperately tonight. And then I'll prophesy over our lives. And we'll be done. This is the message that I want us to close coin on here with. The first prayer point is a prayer point of handover. Let me explain it and then we'll pray. That you get to a point, come, where 
you take your life and donate it to God. Lord, I'm tired of this trouble. He said, my yoke is easy. The one you are carrying is not easy. That means it's not of God. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Will you hand it over to God and say, Lord, I'm tired of depressing myself. This is my conviction. I am a complete servant of God. If my reputation goes bad, he's the one to receive it. If God honors me, he's still the one to receive it. Are we together? If I lack food to eat and I don't have the energy, no soul winning, no salvation, who pays the price? If there's food to eat, I make God responsible for my life. I play my own part of the deal. And I don't, I never dapple into his part. It's God's part. Lord, I leave it to you. I have done my own part of faithfulness. I know you are, you are too faithful. And then you rest. We are going to hand over. You know, let me tell you how to know the area you've not handed over to God. The one you think about all the time. The one you are obsessed about and you are almost dying about. God is not yet Lord of that area. Are we, are we ready to pray? Rise up on your feet, everyone. Please, I want everybody to pray. Pray seriously. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and cry. Mention the areas in your life that cause you sorrow and depression and say, Lord, I hand it over to you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. I hand it over to you, oh God. I'm tired of killing myself. I'm tired of dying slowly. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Turn it into a prayer. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I lay aside every financial worry. Pray. I lay aside every worry about job. I lay aside every worry about children. Every worry about ministry. I choose peace. I choose peace. I reject worry. I choose peace. Oh, you make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters. Kabarakato shekete lebo, embroko to poske shekete, shekete leko to stoprekete. Make sure you're praying. You are the Prince of Peace. And I've received you in my life. I receive your peace. I receive your peace. In this wicked world, I receive your peace. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For what? He cares. That's the second prayer point. Listen, don't think God does not know that life is full of troubles. Are we together? He's called the ancient of days. Don't think he's not aware of your challenges. But he, till, he still tells you, my peace I give to you. 
the second prayer point is you are going to lay aside every trouble bring it before him and say lord this is what is disturbing me this is that which is troubling me i i bring it to your throne lift your voice and pray i bring it before your throne oh i bring it before your throne i exchange my burden for your body i exchange my yoke for your yoke your yoke is easy your burden is light lord that which i've been carrying is killing me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, listen. The last prayer point is a cry from your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, I lose affection for anything that is not you. I, I can use them, but they will never win my heart. Lift your voice and pray. I lose affection for money. I lose affection. Pray. Pray. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. I lose affection. Money will never depress me. Pray. I lose affection. That loss for material things. That loss for fame. That loss for power. That loss for accomplishment. I lose it. I break away from 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 it. Everything I've held on to. The last prayer point let's add one more cause the spirit of depression worry anxiety it is of the devil open your mouth and curse it open your mouth and curse it i reject you in my life i reject you in my family i reject you in the name of Jesus, I reject worry. I reject anxiety. I reject depression. In the name of Jesus. Shabakata la barara rabos. Lekete proskete. Enkretos koto lekete. Rekete kete lebo koto pregede bela rebo. Reject it. Reject it from your destiny. My God is faithful. My God is faithful. I refuse depression. Nigeria will not make me depressed. The government will not make me depressed. The economy will not make me depressed. The happenings around my life cannot make me depressed. 
I reject depression. God is faithful. My God is alive. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing, Savior. gentlemen say after me in the name of Jesus I will be a man of peace my home will be your peace I reject depression I reject worry I reject frustration I embrace the peace of God peace above money peace above fame Peace above prestige. Peace above accomplishments. This must be your understanding. You must embrace the peace of God above and beyond every other thing. I want to prophesy to you in closing. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. Help us media. Hosea 12 13. This will be the last service for the year many of us from tomorrow will be traveling you cannot ignore the place of prophecy it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen when Israel cried in Egypt God did not go to them to rescue them. God went to a man and said, are you hearing my people cry? Are we together? God would have gone to Egypt and said, okay, I have come. But God went to a man and left the salvation of the people in the hand of a man. It says by a man, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Right? He says, and by a prophet was he, Israel, preserved. Listen. One of the greatest revelations I've had this year is understanding the operation of the body of Christ. The Bible says that the church, give us Ephesians chapter 2, please. Let's just look at that one scripture. I'm about to prophesy to you and I need you to have this understanding. Ephesians. Hmm. Let's look at 19 and 20. 19 and 20 quickly, please. Ephesians 2, 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And he said, all of you are members of the household of God. Right? 21. Okay, 20. He says, and are built upon what? The foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Listen, you must understand how God built the body. He said the moment 
you get born again there are two ministries you must encounter if your destiny must arise it says you must encounter these foundational ministries the ministries of the apostles and the prophets it's not about human worship it's how god built the kingdom he said it is built upon this truth foundation there means upon this truth this revelation is called the foundation of the lord he said nevertheless the foundation of the lord does what stand sure you can't change it it stands sure so by a prophet every time people cry god never comes to them he comes to them through a man go and read your bible when there was famine god came to a man there are human beings that god have sent that hold the prayer points of people that carry anointings that can open the destinies of people but the bible tells us that you have a role to play let's look at that one scripture second chronicles 2020 20, right your job is to believe second chronicles 2020 20. he said believe in the lord your god so you shall be established but it's not enough to just believe in god he said believe in his prophets he didn't say the prophets believe in his prophets so shall he make progress so shall he do well so shall he prosper see this is the formula don't try to create another one you will punish yourself for nothing the church was built on the foundation Every time God hears the cry of a people, he goes to a man and he says, you heard their cry. I thought God will come to Egypt by himself, but he went to Moses. When creation was crying in sin, Jesus had to become a man because they searched and no man was righteous enough. So Jesus became a man. Even God did not come directly. He had to become flesh. Are you not seeing how it works? When the revelation of the, of the New Testament was to come to the body, a man had to be found in the name of Apostle Paul. And he brought that fellowship of the mystery to the body of Christ. When Satan wants to destroy you, he will make you believe in God and disrespect his prophets. Are you seeing that? He won't tell you to stop believing in God. You say believe in God. After all, everybody has equal access to God. And you will fool yourself. And see that you are praying and fasting, but nothing is happening. When the widow in Zarephath was in trouble, God went to a man immediately and said, I have commanded you, go. Have you not seen it? When Samaria was in trouble, I thought God would have gone to them. He never went to the lepers. He brought in a man and he said, by this time, the moment the man spoke, God looked for lepers. In other words, the tool God will use is not necessary. Let the prophecy just come. He can use anything. An axe head can float back when a stick comes. But it must be at the instruction of the prophet. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? If that man threw a stick, nothing would happen. But he did it at the word prophecy is powerful i learned this from god's servant bishop david Oyedeko. he has changed the lives of people with prophecy but it only works to them that believe you don't receive a prophetic word from a colleague you don't receive a prophetic word from a friend i've taught it here there are individuals that are not pure human beings lift your hands god's ability God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Sing it one more time. God's ability.
Hallelujah. I've shared with you again and again my visions. How that I saw an endless sea of people and they were crying. No food, no water. And I said, who is the cause? And they pointed at me. Ah, and I was afraid because some people had chased me to come into that small room where I was hiding. And I made up my mind. I said I was still going to go out and rescue them. If I perish, I perish. The moment I opened the door, I saw a giant and he held my hands and he said, I will walk with you. Brothers and sisters, this is not, it's not about human beings or human boasting. It's about God's spiritual system. Arguing it is foolishness. There are many prisoners today paying the The foundation of the Lord and the Bible says that foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic I want to speak over your life listen the year is not too late for God to finish what he said he would do are we together oh no come on we have at least 20 more days it doesn't take time is it not a prophet of God that said by this time tomorrow it doesn't take time is, is only unto men according to their faith don't say it's the end of the year god does not work with human calendar he works with his word the moment the word of god comes he said he said let there be and there was in the name that is above all names i prophesy over your life every package that is meant to come into your destiny in this year of the rain that is yet to be delivered i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus every request you have dropped here from January, February, March, April, May, and now it's December, and it looks like God has failed you. Let me prophesy to you that by 31st of December, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be holding your testimony. I prophesy to you that by 31st of December, you will be holding your testimony. May not be possible with men but the bible says with god we are involving god in this talk every level of prosperity you should have entered in this year of the rain and for whatever reason and by any means you have not entered it let this next 20 days days of supernatural supplies Hallelujah. That spirit that destroys men towards the end of the year, that people would have labored. Have you seen obituaries 28 December, 29 December, some even 31st? In the name that is above all names, may a seal of longevity come upon your life. May a seal of longevity come upon your life. I forbid death from coming towards your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the frustration you usually face at home there are some of us December times are times of pain poverty this December will be the best you have ever had I prophesy this December will be the best you have ever had in the name of Jesus Christ.
everything that has troubled your heart everything that has brought tears to your life you cannot even share with people because of the pains i prophesy to you tonight the prince of peace is stepping into that situation i declare unto you the prince of peace is stepping into that situation every challenge in your health every sickness i don't care what it is that has refused to go this night in the name of jesus we challenge it and we command it to live your life forever we command it to live your life forever a dimension of favor you did not see from january to november i decree that you will have it beginning from this night I prophesy it again beginning from this night not tomorrow this night may that dimension of favor come over your life in the name of Jesus everything you are praying for is restoration there are people who have lost things and you are trusting God you are saying Lord before the end of the year let a miracle come the Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say yet restore in the name that is above all names I prophesy restoration for you I prophesy restoration for you in a way and a manner that you have not heard listen did you hear the testimony of Pastor Femi and his family 18 years even if it's one one thousand they are paying you every month at the end of 18 years you will have something to smile enough with if your salary was hundred thousand calculate it times 18 years plus benefit and allowance that kind of restoration in the name that is above all names may it come upon your life tonight i prophesy to you receive that restoration right now the testimony that you need to take home as an evidence that this was the year of the rain for you the testimony you must hold and tell people look this is a symbol of God's faithfulness I release it upon your hand right now I release it upon your hand right now in the name of Jesus Christ may you be a burning and a shining light in the name of Jesus Christ through your hands many will be healed through your hands many will be saved i place an unction of the almighty upon you that as you go back to your various locations and stations you will come back with a harvest of dramatic testimonies in the name of jesus christ next year for you will be a it will be a balance brought forward of everything everything in the years past that have refused to come it will be a balance brought forward for you in the name of Jesus Christ listen it is still the year of the rain are you hearing me it is still the year of the rain and I prophesy to you whatever the rain represents within these few weeks we have to the end of the year may you experience the full revelation of what the rain represents hallelujah any human upon the face of the earth who is holding the key to your blessing the key to your breakthrough in the name that is above all names from the north to the south the east and the west between now and 31st December by prophecy I call them into your life by prophecy I call them into your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Samuel told Saul he said as you go back you will find out that the donkey that has been missing has been found and then he said you will see three men you will see them holding bread they will give you from the bread whoever is holding what is supposed to be given to you whatever resistance and manipulation from hell is stopping them from releasing it 
I command that between now and the end of the year, it comes into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. The kind of Christmas celebration you have never seen from birth. In the name that is above all names, may it be experienced this December. Whatever ties away financial supplies from your families during this festive period so that they celebrate Christmas like frustrated people, I decree and I prophesy in the name of Jesus, may it be a different one this time around. For those of you who are going to be traveling far and wide, we declare that the mystery of the blood goes with you all through. In the name of Jesus Christ. In one minute, I'd like you to ask everything remaining that you want God to do. Please, in one minute, go ahead. I'm releasing my faith with you. In one minute, every other thing you are trusting God for. Don't say it can't happen. Open your mouth and pray. Oh, I release my faith. I release my faith. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Open your mouth and place a demand on the faithfulness of God. Lord, I still believe you. Pray. Tell him, I still believe. Today is the 11th of December, but I still believe. It says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come i agree with you that whatever you have declared before god may it become a testimony in the name of jesus christ john 17 let's look at the prayer of jesus let's start off from there john chapter 17 we'll read from verse 13 down to 21 there's just one verse but let me just lay a foundation even as we build let your heart be open it's not only important to hear the word of god you must always be in a position to receive it as many as receive him he gave them power the power is given only to those who receive hallelujah john 17 verse 13 and now this is jesus praying by the way jesus is praying talking to his father um he was shortly to depart to begin his passion the activities that led him to the cross and now he's praying verse 13 and now come i to thee please listen and these things i speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves 14 we'll run down till 21 i have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world 15. i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world this is a message on its own we can dwell for weeks here just trying to unravel this mystery this is jesus praying but that thou shouldest keep us them from evil they are not of the world even as i am not of the world 17. sanctify them through thy truth Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might also be sanctified through the truth. 20. Now listen. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Say, Jesus prayed for me. Or say, Jesus prayed for me when he was praying this prayer he added you to the list he said i'm not just praying for these immediate disciples but there are many who will receive and believe and come into the truth as a result of their word 21 is my verse of emphasis it says that they may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they may also be one 
in us. Why? To the end that the world may believe that thou sent me. Everybody say that they may be one. I'm really speaking passionately to the body of Christ tonight. And this concerns every one of us because we're part of it. I want to challenge one of the things the Bible says the fivefold ministry was supposed to address. When you read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning from verse 10. The Bible says, when he led captivity captive, he went down to hell. And the Bible records that he gave gifts to men. Are we together now? He said he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all of that. And then he says, he gave this fivefold for certain things. For the equipping, perfecting, maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? Kingdom advancement, right? Then it says that we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. So it is God's desire that such a thing will exist in the body of Christ called the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. The unity of the faith. A level of oneness in the spirit that the church will have one voice that when we speak creation human beings government systems will acknowledge that which we are communicating because the church has come through the fivefold ministry to a point of alignment where our voice becomes one are we together now one of the chiefest of all the arsenals of darkness in destroying the church is the proposition that 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 mindset that has been injected into the church that makes the pursuit of god look as though it was a personal revelation that was given to just a person. As though God is not interested in the corporate growth of the body. Are we together now? So we have individuals coming with revelations and that's supposed to be the program of God. That's how it comes. It comes through a person but it is for a people. Are we together now? And this, this strategy by darkness has destroyed the body of Christ. Because we have not been able to attain unto that point of unity, maturity, and perfection. It's been a mighty tool that Satan has used. And so, in the next two or three weeks, we are going to be examining the concept of, of uh, this statement that they may be one. The concept of the unity of the faith. But to start off tonight, I want to um, take on, you would call it a subtopic. I call it three great errors. Three great errors. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise yes we will forever sing your praise give us revelation tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ exodus chapter 25 let's start off from there three great errors that i believe has caused havoc in the body of christ has sabotaged the spiritual progress of many believers many ministries many well-meaning people who love the lord and desire the pursuit of godliness exodus 25 and verse 40 this was the construction of the tabernacle media you need to help us very very fast um, today hallelujah I like us to read together one to read and look that thou make them after what their pattern 
which was showed thee in the mount if you can have amplified that would be great hallelujah it says that you ensure that everything that is done to make up that temple is done according to pattern listen when it comes to spiritual progress and spiritual advancement the believer is not left to his options to guess his way and choose his method of spiritual growth and his method of understanding god are we together that degree of autonomy is not given to the believer there is a pattern there is a pathway there is a system with which god desires to be known and you cannot create your own pathway to the knowledge of god several people have gotten into error in an attempt to create different pathways to accessing god but there is a system it's consistent with the character of god that every time god gives you an assignment or wants to show you a dimension of himself he shows you how you will walk into it in this instance he revealed to moses i want to build a tabernacle but there are specifics it was on account of that that the hand of the lord came upon bezalel and released upon him the spirit of creativity and craftsmanship and here god is giving a warning again he's saying make sure under no circumstance should you become emotional about this building of the temple do not get to a point where you pity the people so much that you say no 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 instead of using gold gold is not available it will take us a long time to go and uh, and, and source for it and smelt the gold and all of that let's just manage this god is saying when it comes to this you keep emotions and sentiments there is a prescribed pathway are we together it's amazing how many people attempt to cultivate formulas and methods and all kinds of ways that they believe will lead to christ that's why jesus ended that confusion once and for all he said i am the way i lead you to the truth and i give you life hallelujah the concept of patterns is something that has intrigued me personally in my work with god ministries have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god families have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god listen everybody says spiritual patterns say it, spiritual patterns there is a prescribed formula for doing anything in this kingdom hallelujah there is a spiritual formula for being a father the only way you can become an effective father in the kingdom is to subscribe to that formula when you guess your own method it has severe side effects there is a pattern to become blessed and wealthy in the kingdom you guess your own pattern or listen to the garbages that are marketed around there will be a side effect let me tell you something you see the failure of governments across territories from nigeria to other parts of the country is a result of our guessing different pathways of managing the earth when god designed man he gave a pattern are we together now our refusal to pay attention to the patterns of god is what is responsible for many tragic events in families when you see a family for instance where it is the mother who is fending for the children and the father is there crossing his leg doing nothing for instance that is a violation of the patterns of god and the bible says whosoever breaks the hedge please pay attention the serpent is authorized to strike so your only basis of fortification in the kingdom is your subscription your alignment to divine patterns concerning every matter hallelujah now we live in a world there is no time in modern history where we have a beehive of arrogant people living and walking upon the face of the earth 
everyone with his own um, self-exaltation. We pride ourselves in intellectual accomplishments. We pride ourselves in our social status and all kinds of things. And these false accolades have brought us to a point where we believe we can be God outside of the Christ. You see, let me tell you something. When the New Testament believer derives the relevance of his entire work in Christ, any activity at all you try to initiate that is outside of the authority, the supervision, and the jurisdiction of the Christ is error, is disalignment, and is apostasy, a deviation from God's patterns. Are we together now? There is a pattern for everything in life. When God anoints you and calls you into ministry, there is a pattern. When God anoints you and calls you into leadership, there is a pattern. Now the trouble there is, we receive the call and choose our pattern. Are we together now? Think how many times the people in the Bible refused to move until God told them how to do it. Moses is standing before the Red Sea and he knows the Red Sea can part. He knows there is a provision in the might of God to deal with that situation. Now Moses as a person did not know how it will happen. But one thing is that in the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom there is a provision for dealing with that predicament. Are we together now? And so Moses had to pay attention to stay with God and God spoke to him in Exodus 14 tell the people to move forward stretch your rod part that sea with it. When they got to Jordan you would think it was the same instruction given to Moses but Joshua had to wait to receive another part on how to part the same sea you went for a meeting and the lord told you let everybody lift his hands then you go for another one and assume if god said everybody lift his hands that's what he's saying now and he said everybody lift your hands and nothing happens and he said lord what is this and he says i'm a god of patterns is god speaking to us there were times when the nation of Israel were told to stand still, don't do anything, God will fight for you, hold your peace. There were times he said, prepare for war. You are going to fight. Patterns. Our inability to understand, listen, please, I pray that God will open your eyes. This is not even where I'm going to. When the Bible says all things are possible, let me explain to you what that means. In God's multifaceted wisdom, there is a solution for everything. Only if you can wait until you receive the blueprint for addressing that current condition. Are we together now? The Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns. How God approaches things in life. His methodology, his approach to the issues of life. God's pattern is that, listen, if you do not have love for instance even your faith works by love that's god's pattern god's pattern of prosperity is that there is he that scattereth and yet increases there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty the world has their pattern cheat loot kill hoard resources patterns are we together now the world prides itself in achievement in the kingdom it is god that gives men the power to get wealth there are patterns our cultures have their patterns for instance they tell you when you get married beat your wife in such a way that she will understand the possibilities that are in you then start treating her well are we together now so that if at any point she wants to trivialize your masculinity the memory of what had happened will put her into order that's a world's pattern but god says uh -uh. wives submit husbands 
love your wives and he didn't leave you to love the way you like he said as christ love the church are we together now let me tell you something dear our lives are largely a consistent activity of violating kingdom patterns consistently in god's kingdom if you want to be great you must be humble in the world system you try to like a political party you try to gather together loyalists who will exalt you but here's how we are we rise in the kingdom if i be lifted up not if you i will draw all men are we together now divine patterns let me show you one more scripture and then we'll begin to talk about the errors ezekiel 43 when i found this this was this was powerful i mean it blessed me ezekiel 43 from verse 7 to 12. ezekiel 43 is god blessing us already there are divine patterns ezekiel 43 7 to 12. it says and he the lord said unto me son of man listen he said this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where i will dwell in the midst of the children of israel forever he said and my holy name the house of israel shall be no more profane neither they nor their kings by their idolatrous halotry nor by the dead bodies and monuments of their kings verse 8 nor by setting their threshold and so on and so forth let's go to nine listen he said now let them put away their idolatrous halotry and the dead bodies and monument of their kings far from me and i will dwell in their midst forever ten son of man listen he says show the temple by your description of it to the house of israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity that they may see how much they have deviated from my ordinances and my patterns he says and let them measure accurately its appearance and plan next verse and if they are ashamed of all that they have done make known unto them the form of the temple and the arrangement of it this was a prophetic language he's speaking prophecy here it exists and its entrance and the whole form of it and its ordinances and all its forms and all its laws and write it down in their sight so that they may keep the whole form of it and all the ordinances of it and do them he said look 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 look. these guys are guessing around they are guessing the reason why my presence is not made manifest is that there is a specific spiritual pattern like like an organogram that if done well will give me space to find expression when when Balaam was called by Balak to go and curse the nation of Israel, when he got to the mountain, the Bible says he saw that there was a spiritual formation. Are we together now? The nation of Israel were arranged according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. That was a pattern that was given. And he looked and he said, ah, these people are blessed. I cannot curse them. He tried to curse them. But the dexterity of the pattern refused the cause from coming out. Are we together now? He that breaks the hedge, he that violates the patterns, the serpent, not may strike. The serpent is waiting at the mercy of your alignment, waiting for your disalignment to authorize his operations. He said, Tell them. I want you to give them the dimensions because you see a man when you read the new testament the bible tells us that we are we are temples temples and so in the similitude of this that was revealed to prophet ezekiel he's saying there are dimensions there are patterns listen this spiritual alignment works like magic look at me please look at me i want to talk to you honestly brothers and sisters you may never know to what degree your alignment can authorize the activities of heaven around your life 
Elijah the prophet understood divine patterns when it was time to call the presence of God he didn't roam around guessing his options he said bring me 12 stones because he was operating with the God of the covenant bring me 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel he put a sacrifice upon it he said bring me water and there was blood upon it and he called down the God of heaven and God came instantly are we together now the patterns of God there has been largely a deviation from God's pattern you see when you look at a life that after prayer after fasting you lay hands on the person four gallons of oil and the person does not change and there is no breakthrough let me tell you among other reasons that person is in by default living in disalignment to the ordinances and the patterns of the kingdom let me tell you something please come you see ba if this guy has a spirit manipulating him whereas by default his heart is stayed on violating the truths and the principles of the kingdom no matter what kind of deliverance i do the devil will only be playing caricature and mockery with him are we together now because the devil knows that the edge is broken he can find expression we see this in the book of job satan came to job and found out that the hedge was closed and he went back to god and said allow me allow me to be able to penetrate and find expression so i can pray for this guy and lay hands on him are we together now but he will go back into consistently violating the patterns of god the pattern of god you see someone sent me a text thank you someone sent me a text today and said um he said i'm tired of my life i don't even know what is happening in our family man of god i believe one word from you would change our financial situation and i say it's not true no i wish listen i i can prophesy and it can bring breakthrough but that breakthrough is like pouring water in a basket there is a pattern that authorizes that breakthrough to leave the family are we together one they are not honoring the lord with their time no no no, no. let's even leave honoring the lord with your time number one their hearts like the macedonians are not even with god it says they draw nigh to me with their mouths their lips but their hearts are far away from me are we together now tithing is zero even when it is zero even when it is there is a bribe they walk up to god with anger and resentment spend everything and calculate what they spent later on and now say i spent ten thousand okay god how much do i even have two thousand okay take one thousand this is your tithe that kind of attitude will keep that man in poverty and then to talk of other principles you do nothing you get nothing are we together that idea of something for nothing is an illusion it's nonsense so that man is violating this pattern and when he comes for miracle service in his mind he's thinking oh god let this guy call me and prophesy to me and say your level is changing and all through the preaching time he's impatient He's just waiting for where we say rise up on your feet because to him he believes every other thing i'm saying is nonsense this man you are happy there's water in front of your table that's why you don't know what is wrong with me listen it is because of this that we have very little appetite to stay with the word and understand the principles of the spirit and one of the errors that is even coming to the body of christ right now is the replacement supposedly to replace the word ministry with what we know as prayer ministry just follow me i have something for you tonight. are we together now and so it is good to pray but many people convince themselves and think because i am praying look i know so many ignorant prayer warriors who whose lives is not producing any result their frustration is to the roof because they want to replace one kingdom truth with another 
are we together now we just finished seven days prayer and fasting but there are there are patterns there are principles that you must learn listen please pay attention to what i'm saying if you are still guessing your life you are going to be in trouble please come here jimmy let me use two people benga come uh, who promise come let me just use these three people come sir now watch this these are great men of god these are three great mighty people listen if i give all of them a mic and i say in five minutes I, i'm not going to do that just an example i say hey, Jimmy, what is the key to the blessing in the kingdom maybe that's the question he has to ask you can you stand up and articulate the same way i look at you and i say how do you make jollof rice i have a, get a pen and paper get one cup of water go and buy this and that add onion don't put it too early do this and that all of those rules are we together now i come to benga and i say how is it is there a possibility that a man can walk in divine health oh yes the bible says it by his stripes we are healed are you living in it no that means something is wrong and the problem is never from god can he teach you and guide you as though giving you a formula are we together now number three i meet promise and i say promise can favor work in my life every day and every time is there such a reality in a man's work with god that based on an understanding and a, an anointing that comes upon your life you can walk in favor i can call one more person and say can you show us the path of advancement and progress in the spirit can you teach me what to do such that after 10 years i'm still moving forward regardless of what happens everyone say patterns please look at me brothers and sisters your spiritual growth is not all about getting revelations you do not understand it's about understanding the construction you have to know how the kingdom is built the systems of god's kingdom to master the laws with which you will use to command results in this territory otherwise no matter what else you do it's only a matter of time you'll be frustrated i guarantee you you can jump around and act like you're moving forward 10 years down the line because this is why you find out that so many people this guy starts well after three or five children he's angry he cannot remember the message he preached 10 years ago because he only prepared it for preaching he preached it powerfully but that truth has not been seated in him what do you know which pattern of the kingdom do you understand that brings you at peace with creation if somebody looks at you now and say mama i'm going to a herbalist tonight and i assure you you see this fowl that i'm holding in my hand is for you we are going to kill you this night I want to ask you a question koinonia what will you do i know what many of you will do you will call me or you will call benga or any of the leaders <laughs> apostle somebody is, is daring i'm a member of koinonia that's why you will stay first you see let me tell you look up look up listen if this is how it continues becoming i'm not helping you i'm only it's like a musician coming for a show that's what is happening the goal of these teachings all the time is not to make you keep saying my this guy is an anointed man of god no there is something that is supposed to be transferred to you are we together like a button at a point you should be able to hold it that which we have seen that which we have heard now you handle it and you can go places with it i know it i know how this thing works somebody looks at you and say you are a failure continue praying in tongues and you laugh and say no 
I'm not just a tongue talker. I know the patterns of God. I understand it. Listen, I don't care what you are doing that you are calling spiritual growth. If you are not understanding the patterns of the kingdom, the days that will come will frustrate your Christian experience. Look at what is happening, for instance, in the economy now. 1,200 naira or there about one gallon of oil. Now, now, the reality is that that's, that's very painful. But have you got the light that shines in the night? In the midst of this cry, some people have never had it this good. What is responsible for it? Are we together? There seems to be a time when a spirit comes upon the body of Christ and people start getting lukewarm and cold. Even preachers. I, sometimes I really find it funny. A man of God comes on stage and says, look, uh, we are going to just review what we have been teaching because he's stranded. He has not mastered the key to continuous growth in the spirit. And so he has exhausted every message. Four months into the year, he's tired. And then he comes and says, well, um, why are you put looking at me like that? It's not like I didn't prepare. I've been busy. You think ministries? And then he starts venting his anger because he has gassed out. He does not know that there is a formula in the spirit that can keep men on fire 24 hours. Believe me when I say this. That when people are drowning spiritually, Right? A man who used to walk in miracles and power five years ago, five years later, is, is barely trying to pray for headache. Something happened. His inability to understand how to sustain the anointing is drying him up. Are we together now? Please look at me. What you do not know in the kingdom should be your pursuit at this point. That's how to grow. You don't just open your devotional and say, Today, let me read Second Kings. I've not read Kings in a long time. You are not growing. You are convincing yourself that because others are seeing you read the Bible, then when you finish, you just walk around, pray for two hours in tongues, just stroll around and ba 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 one hour, ba 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 two, two hours, and you just say, Oh, that's enough. I'm growing. You are not growing. Believe me, you are not growing. It's just religion because your life and the lack of spiritual evidence will show. That there is no progress bless you guys please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord make my growth constructive pray inside and outside and all those following us online pray lord make my growth constructive i'm tired of comparing myself with people and convincing myself that i'm growing whereas i am not growing the difference between a general and one who just entered the army is, is access to mysteries, access to patterns. He understands the art of war. He knows what to do. He knows how to put fear in his opponent and the enemy. Spiritual growth is not haphazard. You can lay hold on eternal life. You can lay hold on the precepts of the kingdom. If that is not happening, no matter how you convince yourself you are not growing listen please look at me to grow spiritually is not to know how to preach there are many people who have studied homiletics and they know nothing about spiritual growth to grow spiritually is not to get to the point where you can now start writing books look even an unbeliever is smart enough you can go online what does it take intellectually speaking to prepare a nice sermon if i tell you to preach on faith are you so daft that you cannot go and get messages on faith and listen to one and get some things and look at one or two scriptures remove some things you don't believe and just arrange it and come and stand and say okay we are preaching on faith and deliver an intelligent message and at the end somebody is saying this is amazing i've never had this i thought the greek word was pistis now you are bringing another word wow and then you leave with envelope and believe that that envelope is a sign it's an authorization that you are making progress then they will invite you for another meeting 
are we together you see how the deception grows they now say oh ebenezer please there's one small prayer meeting i don't know if you can just come and bless us you are the one who you believe you are growing so you are coming on let's all pray one hour two hours three hours you pray spiritually here and there they start calling you for little counseling and say this, i'm making progress believe me if those are the indices you are using for progress you know why i'm saying this a time will come your life will become clear that you are not growing and you have to find ways of explaining to people first and foremost why you are not growing to grow spiritually is not the ability to sing spiritual songs alone that's important that you stand on stage and raise a song a popular song that we know in the body of christ or writing songs no it's not a sign that you're spiritual your degree of alignment to patterns look at me brothers and sisters it is on the strength of that alignment you can look at people and stretch your hands and say my god bless you and that encounter will produce more results to them than long grammar of nonsense that cannot be proved everybody say i want results in my life please say it i want results in my life this is why regardless of how spiritual we think we are the people in our environment subconsciously they are not impressed and they are not convinced because it is barren of the ability to deliver if your life is producing results i assure you your praying in tongues will not interrupt anybody nobody who says yeah, stop shouting jare is too much no they are shouting because they are comparing that shout for three hours every day at the back of their window eight o'clock you are at it is it wrong no but that you are believing that just that in itself on its own please believe me you see ba i may not i may not claim to understand certain aspects in the kingdom but brothers and sisters when it comes to the presence of god and the operation of the kingdom i know what i'm saying there is a way man works with god that God will make your life a wonder. There is a way a man thinks he is working with God. And at the end it looks like God is a wicked God. I counsel people all the time. After years of spiritual activities. They return back with frustration. And they say apostle I can't understand. I'm the prayer leader in my group. I love God every time we organize crusades maybe in a, a place our village at the end of the year i can't understand why is god this unfair to me is this is this how my life will be i will worship you forever love you forever because this god is too good Lord. i will worship you forever love you forever because this god is too good Lord. listen brothers and sisters hear me and believe me when i tell you god is a good god something about our not understanding his ways is responsible the inability to understand the patterns of god and you see that's why many pastors have to be careful a whole territory can be disaligned because of an ideology that comes from a pastor especially here in the north because we are very religious people we are sincere people who are religious so a pastor comes on stage and for 10 years he's teaching people something that is an error with such authority and audacity they give birth to their children and their grandchildren and they say this is the way and when the child is saying daddy i think is they say I will, I will slap you it's been this way have you gotten results through it don't question god it's only god that knows what he's doing let's just keep on no 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 everybody shout no way okay. there is a way growing up i saw many things well-meaning people who said all kinds of things about god this is how we mock ourselves lion of the tribe of judah 
everybody clap for jesus they clap say no 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 this is not for my jesus and god is saying do you really know me all these things you are doing look how many frustrated people in the body of christ look how many people are sick in the body of christ as if divine healing is a lie that's why when you come and you are preaching and say there is a possibility in god to bring you healing they are just watching you it's when they hear somebody just shout under the anointing, everybody say, ah, there's power in this place, so let's pay attention to what this person is saying. It's terrible. Look at what is happening to our families. Brothers and sisters, are you not concerned that our spirituality is not matching up with the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God as claimed by him himself? I tell you where the problem is. It's uncomfortably true but we must admit it our inability to understand his patterns god is a loving god but he's not an emotional god if he were an emotional god the cry of many people would bring them out of hell i will worship you forever love you forever because this god is too good yes i will worship you forever love you forever because this god is too good oh. i have watched the lives of people even in koinonia here i've watched the lives of people when they came for koinonia with their beliefs with their understandings about god and they chose to receive the word of god foolishly childlikely and watch what has happened in their lives hallelujah patterns let's go to three great errors i don't want to just dwell here but i mean i can stay here all night and challenge you i took a study towards the end of last year on god's generals afresh i've studied them so many times so many times but i took i took another study recently and it was as though i had never studied them i remember crying almost for two three hours in the night and say lord what nonsense is this how come we lost touch with spiritual reality no symbol to charge the atmosphere for them no worship song as we know dancing around but these people came with sincerity and they activated possibilities in the lives of people those guys had results hundred people could come sick and up to 95 can live healed verified not this our thing that we're not even sure whether we're healed very sure that they are healed and the lord reiterated it to me again son I will not bend to your pattern it was when the prodigal son got up and said I will arise the father wanted him but the father would not just get up and roam around the son said ah, ah. he thought to himself I have disaligned out of pattern when I was under the authority there I lacked nothing I wanted self-sufficiency it drove me out into lack now i'm eating with pigs question did his eating with pigs reduce the wealth of his father did any demon advise him no he said i will arise let me tell you some things are not demonic it is within your power to be angry and say it must stop from today i will arise and go to my father and say father i have seen against you and against heaven i'm not even worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants and the bible says afar off while he was yet coming the father saw him and ran to him and ran to him i am passionate about seeking to understand the patterns of god our generation is not in ignorance technology has opened us up to a vast array of possibilities i watch believers now 
and i'm telling you with all sincerity the way many people are seeking god is not how i sought god i sought god seriously you don't even see anybody say okay let me get a concordance they don't need it i remember times when we sit down we'll be asking questions ah jesus went to hell and preached a message first peter said so and we are very fine right now believers don't say they sit down gist and talk nonsense then when it's time for prayer everybody say let's pray begin to pray everybody begin to move around and we move around as if we're making a fool out of ourselves listen let me talk to you i have a responsibility to teach you truth if i did not have the results in my life you will say i'm deceiving you are we together now many people call upon god and it looks like he cannot answer and then we keep creating theologies to explain this brothers and sisters he can be hard there is a disalignment we need to return so pastor said god is not a god of crowd he's a god of what then god so loved the world not god so loved israel god is not a god of crowd i desire that no man perish prosperity is not the most important thing all that is needed in your life you don't need any anointing don't no nothing no just the most important thing if you have jesus you have everything it looks like a very nice message believe it and see what it will do to you it will destroy your life that's what has happened let me tell you do you know any spiritual message can make you feel guilty and so it is out of guilt you will believe it people just say i hope you know there's nothing in this life jesus is the way the truth and the life and you just feel guilty and say ah that book of financial intelligence i bought let me just throw it because the way this guy is talking three errors let me talk about it error number one that has ravaged the body of christ is the error of apostasy please write it down apostasy open up your spirit now the lord will bless you apostasy what is apostasy a departure from the known patterns of god a departure a derailing from the principles of god the name is apostasy two scriptures very quickly first timothy please chapter 4 verse 1 first timothy 4 verse 1 apostasy the first error in the body of christ is that we have a people who are hell-bent on teaching nonsense and rubbish without finding out if what they are communicating is in line with god's pattern it says but the holy spirit listen distinctively and expressly declares that what will happen in the latter times some will turn away not backslide turn away completely from the faith it says giving attention to what deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach who teaches it demons. there are doctrines in the body of christ that are doctrines of demons and when i say doctrines of demons don't just think the modern church ancient and modern all there are doctrines of demons that are older than us they subtly came they look spiritual satan always uses it is written apostasy a deviation from the truth listen please look up the first operation of demons in the life of a man is deception to cause a man to err to manipulate truth see deception does not have to be a lie a manipulated truth is also deception i can take truth out of his context and preach you see i've shared with us again and again that this bible is a prophetic book please listen to me brothers and sisters the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want to hear there are native doctors that when you enter their shrine you see bible does that mean they are of god you know it's a native doctor but you enter you can see all other religious books and then he adds the bible he can even say let's before i even pray before we cut this chicken turn to psalm psalm five now you are reading listen you are reading the bible I say, ah psalm five this guy 
guy is making sense. Ah, I'm, I did say, ah, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, but my own is different. Apostasy, a deviation from truth. There are people who have prophesied things to people that did not come from God. They had something, but it was not the Spirit of God. And they misled people. Every manifestation of prophecy that is not in sync with the patterns of God is witchcraft. Whether the operator of it is aware or not, the operator may be innocent, but it does not justify the operation. Are we together now? How many marriages have broken in the church because somebody got up and said, Ah, um, I don't know what is I'm seeing. Martha, leave your husband because as I'm looking at you now, I'm seeing that um, there is a spirit. And they we can't even tell you the name of the spirit. The name of the spirit is A and B and C. Pastors have left wives. People have beaten people. Parents have disowned children. They have called innocent people, mommy water. If somebody who is in his right senses was born, he has birth certificate from the hospital. You now say the person came all the way from the river and all sorts of things. Now listen, I'm not laughing. I'm serious because I'm going to balance it. There are many people who have carried the illusion right now. They walk around saying I'm a witch. He said, who told you? He said, a hey, man of God. That's why I came for miracle service. They said, I am a witch. The man of God has never paid attention to find out what the Bible calls a witch. What is the condition from scripture to be called a witch or a wizard? Are we together now? And this has misled people. How about looking at a lady and vowing that you are going to marry a guy his name is Benga. He likes keeping Malu. He will sit down by your left. If you don't marry this guy, your life is finished. And for 10 years, that lady is roaming around Nigeria looking for Benga. Moving all around. We've discussed this under challenging discussions on late marriage. There is a balance to it because there are times that it is true. See, when truth, notice when truth is manipulated it becomes witchcraft apostasy so many people have been confused today because of wrong teachings let me tell you other wrong teachings so you don't think that maybe i'm challenging people that rubbish demonic teaching that came from the pit of hell please look up came from the pit of hell that the anointing is not important the most important thing is that Jesus is Lord of your life and you are heaven bound. That's a doctrine of demons. It's popular. It's taught by conservatives, but it's still demonic. Money is the root of all evil. Doctrines of demons. It came from the pit of hell. By sincere people, well-meaning. Don't confuse. I'm not saying those who brought it are demonic. It is devilish and it is terrible. Because men have absorbed it and it has produced nonsense in their lives other doctrines prayer is not important you hear people say that kind of thing prayer is not important they even laugh and mock and everything and you see some people pray bah, 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 and the congregation is laughing and demons are saying we like we like this congregation he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint another doctrine of demon once demons once you are praying and you don't have any business with the word just pray it's still the same thing. Are we together now? There are all kinds of episodes of lies sugar-coated with a little truth here and there that is deceiving and misleading the body of Christ. Apostasy, a deviation from the truth. Men of God have advised themselves on different ways to raise money and run church projects. Some of these ways of raising money I say, you know that I love the body of Christ, but I must say it. We think it's nice. We think it's marketable. But some of these things were advices that were given by business people who received their inspiration on the seat of yoga. It was under strong transcendental meditations. They received some of this formula. 
and then we watch their videos on youtube and say wow so this is how you raise money in the church and then you now come and we apply all kinds of things now the man may be genuinely anointed but there is a mix an aberration it's called apostasy a deviation from the truth some of us right now you have believed something that is not of god and that's what has authorized satan regardless of your prayer he still finds expression in your life there are people who believe you can have 10 girlfriends it doesn't matter the most important thing is marry one they even tell themselves it looks nice and they say man of god i have like 10 guys the last guy just came two weeks ago just can you help me which one do you think will be a nice guy because a doctrine was marketed to you are we together another the latest of the dangerous apostasies that are coming is an imbalance of the concept of fatherhood and mentorship that is bringing is making men in the body of christ demigods are we together now usurping authority not just spiritual guidance but literally holding the keys of the lives and destinies of other people the disadvantage being a cause or a threat and all sorts of things there is a place for that but i've always frowned at such imbalances that have destroyed the body of christ so we have offshoots of these kinds of things people who kneel down and hands up in church churches where they flog people oh you are not aware of it it has happened to some of you that's why you are quiet you are just looking because it has happened listen I don't say this in a cynical way I came with my heart to pour it out this apostasy Jesus prayed a prayer he said that they may be one they will cut away from all these things and stand in a point of strength doctrines of devils right now there are all kinds of strange demonic ministerial associations are we together now if you want to rise you have to come into it's almost like a cabal like a cult you never rise until you subscribe to certain occultic things and at extreme levels at least it's not strange in the body of christ we know that there are all kinds of occultic societies how many men of god have been caught with drugs at airports customs grounded them right do you think the man of god started selling drugs like that he started innocently the first day he went on tv he paid almost one million he said ah there must be another way of raising money and somebody say continue going we, we are telling you this thing we know how it works and say together with your preaching you buy the shoe that has uh whatever you put cocaine if you ship that one successfully they transfer the money to your account who will know after all it's just your spirit that is safe your your your, your body your spirit is going to heaven your body will be transformed all kinds of theology apostasy it may not concern you now but if you don't pay attention to it you'll be very surprised a man of god once said and i've shared it here how that he went to minister for one of his spiritual sons and after he finished the ministration he he saw the crowd within a year there were well over 4,000 people. And he looked at him. He said, ah, in this place, 4,000. He laughed and said, Daddy, you think your oil, what, what you are releasing upon us? And he said, no. He told him, he said, go out. He sat down with his wife. He said, my daughter, talk to me. And she said, I will tell you the truth, sir. He said, they went to somebody, true story, a herbalist who gave them a mic. You know, most men of God, we have our mics. They gave him a mic. But that mic, they slaughtered a baby like these are little ones they slaughtered a baby with the physical blood they did some enchantments and gave the mic if you are passing that vicinity and your spirit is not at a particular frequency if you hear that sound you must meander to that church and go and sit down quietly are altar calls being done in that church you won't believe it <laughs> are miracles happening in that church you won't believe it you don't use altar calls and miracles just as a sign that things are okay the man may be sincere but he was desperate for power to an extent that you kill somebody's child one of the ladies here she's even here 
she sent me a text day before when were we talking about it yesterday or day before yesterday somebody came to steal a baby he stole the baby as he was going out with the baby the mother caught him and he dropped the baby and ran away the lady sent me a text it happened in zaria here do you know what people do for this anointing do you know what people do for power do you know what people do for jeep apostasy and people compare themselves with themselves i shared with you a story years ago about a man of god who had a particular oil that was given to him you rub it when you enter the meeting the dramatic manifestations of the spirit and one day you know they were doing an early morning service true story and he's like assistant like this um he didn't bath you know because he had to wake up in the morning run to church, so maybe you just wash his face and he, the man sent him to go and pick something in his room and when he went he saw the oil you know anointing oil just like, I, I thank god let me just rub this thing fast so that at least i can look nice i can bath after the service and the guy rubbed the oil when that guy stepped into the church i mean there were all kinds of somersaults and the jew looked at him and called him he said, what did you use? He said, ah, I saw oil around your this thing and I rubbed it. He said, you rubbed that oil. May the Lord punish me as I stand before you and I'm lying or just giving you a story. Apostasy. Those who have completely deviated, they are not of God or those who are of God but their doctrines are not of God. A man can be of God, but his doctrine is of another spirit. Are we together now? It's still apostasy. So there are those who as people are not, are not um, of God. There are not many of these kinds. Let's be honest. In Nigeria, popular to the stories, people say everybody, they are fake men of God everywhere. It's, it's not true. There are very few people, very few, and they are not even popular, who are fake. But a man can be of God. But his doctrine. There was a doctrine in the Bible called the doctrine of Balaam. Question. Was Balaam a false prophet? So what, why, why was his doctrine being used to admonish the church? There was a doctrine called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Which I hate. Now the Bible tells us about the doctrines of demons praise the lord apostasy wrong personalities bringing doctrines from the pit of hell specifically to mislead the body of christ or genuine personalities but not thorough spiritually and then bringing wrong doctrines and ministering it sincerely but is destroying the, the body of christ these two groups form the group that communicate apostasy a man can be genuine a man can be true but his doctrine may not be of god error number two in the body of christ that will stop the body of christ from coming into a place of unity until we work on it is the fear of confronting apostasy we have a group of people a group of individuals and a group of men of god who are less as fair and do not care about the general growth of the body for as long as their individual ministry is doing well let the body of christ go places look up please these are the ones that do not have the courage to be controversial these are the ones that do not have the courage to address a lot of things please look up they are the kind of people who can see somebody like sam being corrupted in his worship ministry and he's going down and they say well this is not my music director so i don't care they have the fear they hate being controversial they are the kind of men of god who always want a good name they are the kinds of individuals they, they don't want to be associated with any stain no 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 let it not be those kinds of people because of that fear of walking in spiritual things and the fear of being spiritual have refused the power of god from finding expression they are the type who don't want anybody to fall down 
in the church. No, no, no. We don't, we don't want that kind of thing. Somebody starts prophesying, they go and throw him outside. I say, please keep him somewhere close to the toilet, lock him there. We don't want any disturbance. That fear of being controversial. Are we together now? The second error that will stop the body of Christ. When you want to confront certain things, people say, What's your business? Just leave them. Let them do their thing. Shebi, you are going to heaven. But how many other people are going to hell because of it? Are we together now? Listen, let me show you two scriptures that will bless you very quickly. Mm. Titus chapter 1 verse 10 to 13. This, this scripture is very instructive. Titus 1 verse 10 to 13. Let me tell you why many of the people, the believers and ministers in this group fear because of their, they are so conscious of their ego, their ministry and their reputation. There are so many men of God in Nigeria over conscious of their reputation to an extent that they would rather the body of Christ die than they stand strong to say no, 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 but this requires adjustment. They can gossip about it in the secret. They can gather people together and castigate men in the secret. They can say all kinds of things in the secret, but none of them have the courage. They are the type that will see a sister and say, do you know that this sister is sleeping with every brother in this fellowship and you are wondering you are her pastor what is wrong with calling her and say sister i love you they would never say it because they are ashamed of their controversy they are the type that they say ah oh, promise in this is in the police station they say please we have many members this is just one of them let the police handle their work there because he said um if his pastor comes he can talk to him and say please i'm not a pastor of criminals you see that overly conscious of their reputation let me tell you something and i stand before the lord of heaven to tell you this if you have scars i will get on my knees and i will clean that scars with you never will we leave our wounded soldiers simply because of reputation i don't have one i've been controversial from day one there are husbands who will not identify with their wives two years she is not giving birth. And somebody looks at her and starts singing a song. Why do we have two men in this place instead of a man and a wife? And the man starts distancing himself. The fear. Listen. If you want the body of Christ to become one, you must drop aside your ministry, your ego. Are we together now? Because you love the body. That's what Jesus did. You laid aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took on my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are from my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you You are the only one who died for me Gave your life to set me free So I lift my hands to you In adoration Listen by the grace of God, there is nobody close to me who I will see derailing and I will be ashamed to hold his hands. We have stood by people in this place with all kinds of situations. I'm not, my idea of being a man of God is not gathering. That's why men of God do not have spiritual daughters and sons who are blind, lame. Those ones are not sons. The one who is a CEO. The lady who is drop dead beautiful, my daughter. The one who is, is, is God, God is helping them, all kinds of things. She's sick, they don't have money, it's depending on you. That one is a nuisance. The fear of being controversial. The fear of confronting apostasy. They sit down in a place, they are the people who can be outside. And somebody is making derogatory statements against a man of God because of a misconception. And they have the opportunity to say, ah, my brother, whatever it is that happens, you don't address this. They keep quiet. 
and the person who is talking is saying I, I think you are aware you know that a jimmy is not serious with god the guy will be nodding but he's supposed to be a jimmy's member but he's nodding because of the fear of identifying we have people in the body of christ like that are we together now they are ashamed of identifying with christ they are the type who will never put a gospel ringtone they are the type who can never wear a shirt jesus saves ah they are falling their hands they are the types who can never say bless they will say bless you when they come for koinonia but they can do every other thing fear fear of my ego fear of my ego fear of my reputation when they brought the woman caught in adultery to jesus that was what they thought he had the fear they thought he loved his ministry so much that jesus would have nothing to do with a prostitute and they dropped her before him and said you claim to be holy this lady she's been caught in adultery what do you recommend and jesus looked and he says you see all of you whoever does not have sin among you cast the first stone and she was shocked when he went to the Samaritan woman, there was a time Jesus sat with prostitutes. He was not preaching. They were eating. And people said, this guy is a liar. When Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box and was rubbing her hair on Jesus' feet, people said, that's it. We've had enough of this. This guy is, is no, you are not straight. No way. You know Mary Magdalene somewhere. This is not the first time this is happening. And watch this. Jesus never had any pressure to defend himself. I know what many of us will do. You go and say, look, I want you to know that I just looked at her and it's not like that. I know she's somebody's wife now. What is the whole thing? Can't... Fear. Fear of evangelism. A guy loves you, but he's not sure you are a Christian. And God says, preach to him. And you say, ah, after this guy has written me all kinds of letters, I will lie now and start talking to him about Jesus and fold my hand and scatter everything and say I'm a church girl. The fear of being controversial. Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, hear me before men, whoever is ashamed of me before men. You look at a man of God, there is nothing around his life that lets you know he's a man of God. Hallelujah. People can come to your house and say, sorry, oh, bros, that I, I just held one bottle of Buddha. Let me just drink it very fast. I mean, I said, no, no problem. Just sit down and relax. No opportunity to preach and talk to them about Jesus. It's not an issue. And they say, won't you take two? And then you just take one cup too and say, Lord, you know that it's just when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. This group of people are afraid of confronting truth. Listen, there are many pastors in many churches who have seen the truth, but they cannot speak. Are we together now? There are many pastors who know that it's in being filled with the Holy Spirit that you will step to the next level. They watch people go to hell and remain powerless, and they quickly come. That was what happened to a man called Nicodemus, John chapter 3. He had to come to Jesus by night. He was part of those who were shouting at Jesus in the day. You are this and that and that and that, but in his heart. So he came by night and this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no man, forget all that shout we are shouting in the day. We know the truth. Listen, how many people will insult koinonia, abuse koinonia in the day? and carry the miracle messages and just sneak and lay their hands where the growth is and say god whatever it is let just let let me there are many people i know who may not publicly stand to endorse what we represent but they have come to me in secret and say man of god pray for us sorry you know that it's just because of our environment the courage to be controversial those are the kinds of people who will blaze the revival. How many people can pray in tongues if their loved ones are around? The courage to be controversial. Titus 1. For there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle, vain, empty, and misleading talkers. Listen, 
and self-deceivers and deceivers of others listen he said this is true especially of those of the circumcision party who have all of that verse 11 listen he said their mouths must not be stopped for they are mentally distressing and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach for the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain just stop there there are people like this and he's saying you are watching them he said they should not be allowed to do these things not by writing all kinds of nonsense propaganda but where god gives you an opportunity you can talk to them isaiah 5 verse 20 let's hurry up isaiah 5 verse 20 fear of confronting apostasy they will not speak so you don't know where they are standing because if they speak it may cost them money it may cost them support there are pastors who will never teach because they know the day they teach some truths members will leave and they will rather leave the members and teach error it's a dangerous thing brothers and sisters whoa to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter you know those who do that they are the ones who come and say my goodness my goodness my goodness you preach i mean it was powerful hey, Jimmy, i can't i can't believe what you did and they go back and say what that guy is teaching say lie They do not have the courage. Are we together now? Because of money, because of fame. There are men of God who are blossoming on TV stations because they were given conditions not to preach certain things, not to say certain things. And they said, that's all right. That's all right. And it's growing. Right now, the media is trying to strangle God out. You are not allowed to say God again. Now there are technologies that mute those parts. You watch it in films. People are saying, my God and my, and you don't hear anything. They've removed it away, but they can't allow any other curse word to be free because their subliminal message is programming the mind of a generation to be depraved and to run away from God. How many businessmen in Nigeria can go to their business circles and stand and say look we are business people but this is my pastor i am a christian i love the lord ah, i say you don't do that if you do that that's equivalent to one year's wages in jeopardy and so they don't mind behaving that they are not of christ they don't care you are in a board meeting and people are saying this is what we are supposed to give the workers but we are going to chop this one just don't mind them all these poor people and you are there you just laugh when it backfires you say i didn't say anything but you watched it you would have enjoyed it if it came the bible says they are the ones who call good evil. is there any problem no 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 not at all it's all right the fear of being controversial that's what happens in nigeria that's why we are suffering and having all the kinds of things we're having because there are men whose loyalty cannot be defined there's a man of god i love so much many of you know him pastor tunde bakare I love him very well because not necessarily because i believe in all of his ideologies i love him because he's a man who stand i love people who you can define what they represent let me tell you never be friends to somebody who is friends to everybody he's a dangerous person they cannot define their stand you don't know what camp they are in today it looks like they are here tomorrow it looks like they are here they can become anything as occasion serves them. They are dangerous people. Very dangerous people. Are we together now? There are so many people like that. There are people who come to church. They are nice in church. But you can, if you organize one party, they won't come in the, in the evening. When the light has gone down, they'll just run and say, I just came around. Before you do it, they start nodding to the music. Last scripture. 
Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 and 19. The second category of people who are causing error in the body of Christ. Those who fear confronting any deviation from the patterns of God. Because of what it will cost them. Ezekiel 3 verse 18 and 19. Listen. If you say to the wicked. If I say to the wicked. You shall surely die. And you do not give him warning. Are you hearing now? Or speak to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way. To save his life. He said the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require from your hand. Next verse. Yet if you warn the wicked man. And he turn not from his wickedness. Nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered yourself. There are many men of God who are holding in their hands people's reasons for going to hellfire. And I assure you, they will answer God. The rich man is unfaithful to his wife. You know it. The rich man is into drugs. You know it. He carried 100 million from the drug money and brought it to your church. And because you need the money, you cannot sit down to say, sir, please hold your money. I'm more interested in your soul. Out of that one million, you have already calculated. Two jeeps, 10, 10 million, that's 20. Tight, 10 million. Instruments, speakers. I'll buy another RAV4 for my wife. You have calculated it. God is watching. The fear of being controversial. You can stand with one billion naira. I will tell you the truth. And tell you this is it. This is not it. Number three. Is God speaking to us? Ready for number three? The third reason or the third error is exaggerated confrontation of error. Hmm. Pay attention to what I'm about to teach. Exaggerated confrontation of error. This is the third kind of error. So the first is apostasy. The second is the error of silence and indifference. The third is the error of imbalance. Imbalance, misjudgment. This is where I will dwell and then we will pray. The third category of people. Those who are cynical, wicked by default. Who pride themselves at exposing and revealing the downfall of people. In a bid to prove that they are correcting, they find pleasure in revealing the flaws of the body of Christ. They are the type who will hold on to certain things in a person or in a ministry and stop people from receiving from God. Listen. There are many men of God today who preach against receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask them why. They will say, I went for a meeting. And I saw a man of God teaching people how to pray in tongues. Because of that singular mistake, they build a doctrine around it and use it as the basis for attacking anything that will become a blessing. Are we together? Because they had a story that a man of God was sleeping with another man's wife. They just say, all young men, especially when all these ones that wear suit, no tie, be careful. You see that? They say, I remember an incident. They pick on that one and build a doctrine out of it. It's called exaggerated confrontation of error. It would have been good if it were kept within the ambience of its relevance. But by default, they had always been intimidated. Listen, this group of people are those who never do anything serious. They are the ones who look for justifications. When people are praying, three hours eight hours and they are not praying they are the ones who are intimidated the day somebody from the prayer group falls sick they are the ones to let you know those prayer people somebody has fallen sick it's not all about prayer and they say i've been telling you so they they look for situations to justify their failures and their inability for making a mark i watched a video this afternoon that touched me it was a um many of you know a tedx 
and all of that so i was watching i saw the name it says the power of shame and i said wow this is interesting let me and then i clicked on it to listen to it and it was monica lewinsky remember uh, some of you were t- hallelujah 1998 the saga between her and bill clinton right had a scandal and you won't believe it jimmy when i heard molly kalewinski talk for about 30 minutes i'm not an emotional person honestly especially when i'm under the anointing but i found myself fighting tears because popular to the stories they gave us popular to the way they lambasted that lady a 22 year old lady at that point you are the one who wants to sleep with our president and the, nobody heard her opinion they tore her into pieces and for about 10 or 20 years she could not come up in the open because of the shame and the degradation and when she was talking people were crying i said this reminds me of our world i can stand to preach and make a mistake in communicating something what i wanted to say did not live to you the way it came those who sit in koinonia are already used to me making that kind of error say they understand what i would have said but somebody who has been looking for an occasion say come and listen to this he will cut he will even thank god for i mean he will cut i said just listen to this line he said apostle joshua selman said the primary assignment of the holy spirit is to kill you now he didn't understand what i was saying he said can you see that and you are going to that kind of church (laughs) They are the type who will say, ah, miracles are stage managed. And then the day somebody comes and says, I, I went to this ministry, let me tell you the truth. Kai, what I saw, I didn't like it. They said, you see, but they are always looking for an occasion to validate their weaknesses and their intimidation. So every time they, it seems like they are correcting the body of Christ, they are not correcting the body of Christ. They are venting a philosophy that will give them a breathing space. The goal of their correcting men of God or connecting doctrines is not to create order. The goal is to excuse their limitations. Is God speaking to us? Their confrontation is from the standpoint of jealousy. From the standpoint of envy. Bitter jealousy. The standpoint of envy. They use the truth to destroy. They use the truth to gratify the desires of the flesh. They are the type that will fight prosperity and will use one case study. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm sorry to say it and I say it with every sense of apology. I've heard of men of God who castigate ministers and talk about people maybe selling communion table you know there are churches that sell communion table wristband water etc etc now there is an exaggeration to those things but you do not throw the baby and the bad water thank god i'm not selling anything to you but i've seen a lot of ministers even communion they criticize ministries and say people are selling blood they are selling this ah forget this they are fathers of faith what sort of nonsense is that the people do not understand the mysteries i've seen people insult god's servant bishop david because of feet washing you may not practice it you may have reservations about that but learn to respect people's dimensions and revelations and even where you are addressing such issues for corrective purpose it must come from a heart of love not from a heart of bitter jealousy there is a way i can talk about a man of god you will know i have a personal vendetta this is not about addressing an issue this is a preconceived anger in me that has been seeking for a platform to find expression hear me if you belong to that group it must change tonight are we together a lady who is feeling bad about herself has a very bad self-image and may not work on it and all of a sudden she may see a pretty lady and then see the lady dressed very nude and say look at look at what this look at all your christian girls the way she's is true that that lady is nude but her addressing it is not because the lady is nude she's 
clear the beauty of the lady and the reaction it is creating to her awareness that she's not good enough so she's using hammer to kill a fly she keeps talking about it i said something pain me today what is it see the way this christian girls dress the what they are trying to address is imbalance here men of god talk about miracles they say do you know that people stage manage miracles there are people who do this yes we know that there are people who do this but are there people who teach the truth are there people who teach the truth every young man that is prosperous oh they are drug barons they are this this they are 419 they are whatever don't mind them how can a young man be so rich don't go i mean life has time your limitation what you believe you transfer it to a congregation and keep people poor and keep people fighting everybody listen to me some of you subconsciously are partnering with the devil to destroy the body of christ i told you here you never hear me open open my mouth and talk about a man of god to condemn him if i mention the name of a man of god is to honor him for something i challenge wrong doctrines i would challenge things that i feel need to be corrected are we together but i will never tear down another man's ministry because i'm trying to show you hear me say it again that all koinonia is doing is a contribution to the advancement of the kingdom it will be fallacy for you to believe koinonia is the only ministry that is making impact thank god for the wonderful things he's doing through us but i am aware you are aware that all around the world there are men and women of god who love god with all their heart some of us will never receive blessings from somebody from a catholic church because of your cynicism oh holy mary they do this and that and that and that and god brings somebody to your life who can bless you but that stigma because of the exaggerated confrontation of what you may consider to be imbalance you have closed your heart somebody from another denomination cooks food for you he said god forbid me i can't eat this what has that got to do with the food there are pastors who have propagated all kinds of messages once it is not your member with your church having your wristband or having the pastors or all, all kinds of things you fight everybody let me tell you it is a lie from the pit of hell don't you let no man give you an impression like him or his ministry are the ultimate custodians of the activities of the spirit is in itself is an error jesus said i pray that they may be one that's why you don't find anybody get up here and come and say oh the god of koinonia i don't have a problem with it honestly but i personally for organizational purposes no we give the glory to god and it stops there are we together three great errors the error of apostasy the error of indifference is more deceptive than apostasy because nobody knows where you stand they don't know whether you speak in tongues or not they are not sure they don't know whether you believe in miracles or not please look at me the second category they are the type who can go to a herbalist and still come to a man of God they don't care are we together now yeah they are the types who who will run and take drugs in the secret swallow panadol swallow fancida and come up and say look in the last 10 years God is my witness even a, even I don't even know how Panadol. what was even the name as if they have forgotten panadol how old are you you see the second category the day now they are sick and they have something like a growth that is obvious they travel and don't come to church the lord asked me to preach this because it's very important it's a message to us and it's a message to the body of christ listen galatians chapter 6 verse 1 two scriptures and then i tie it up and we'll pray galatians 6 verse 1 brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort listen he's teaching you how to confront error there is a way to confront error there is a way to confront sin there is a way to confront mistakes are we together there is a way to bring confrontation such that it ends up bringing healing 
an addition and multiplication to the body he says brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort he says, you who are spiritual who are responsive listen to and controlled by the spirit should set him right and restore and reinstate him listen without what any sense of superiority and with all gentleness then he puts a disclaimer keeping an attentive eye on yourself see that less you should be tempted to okay the guy came to you and said honestly i love god but last week i found myself going to a herbalist place to collect a charm i say ah go and tell her possible it's not even me that will say this thing but you see that and before you know it everybody in zaria knows that promise went to collect the child you destroy his life you destroy his ministry and you say i've always known it's not today there was a day the holy spirit was revealing to me holy spirit i'm sorry for refusing to hear you we we pride ourselves listen how many wounded soldiers i'm rounding up in the body of christ do you know the greatest place where believers die is the church i'm not justifying that people live lawless and just do all kinds of nonsense let a lady get pregnant in church and you hear what happens am i am i endorsing it no let a lady get pregnant it's a believer who will come to you and say have you heard he say you mean you are here Kai, you have eyes you can't see are we together now a brother goes to ask a sister and she says no no I'm, I'm honestly i'm already engaged to somebody before you know it this brother says, i'm happy it's good for them blah, blah, blah. you carry and ship trouble it is only in the church where people destroy their wounded soldiers with joy may that never happen in koinonia in the name of jesus christ we have managed all kinds of cases in this ministry all kinds and God is my witness. I love the people with all my heart and with all passion. There are people who have come to meet me with charms. This is what we're doing. There are ladies who have gone to Zaria City and come to say, I don't say, ah, no, no, no. With all the teaching, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't do that. When a brother is caught or a sister, you restore one. Are we together now? If a man of God comes to, how many men of God have come to me? Man of God, I'm preaching, but I'm caught up in masturbation or pornography. I don't look and I say, You of all people, there's no such thing as that. Let me tell you, there is no man who cannot fall. We are all products of God's mercy. I have learned this. I know that if any man is standing, he's only standing because of God's grace. Grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Listen, that's how we treat people all around. You see a fellow believer belonging to a particular church, you stand and laugh at them. Ah, see this lady tying her hair in a certain way see this one cat walking and there are people who see certain ladies see, the ladies just wearing her trousers. i say look at it these are all the prostitute ladies moving all around what is it is wrong is wrong that love is what we do not have that's why we don't see the power of god we pray we fast but we have no love he said there remain these three faith hope and love but the greatest of all is love there is no ministry I cannot preach in. There is no man of God I cannot talk to. No matter, I don't care who. I love the body of Christ. And I love the body of Christ passionately. Are we together now? Very important. There are books many of us would have read that would have blessed us. But because it was written by authors our pastors have condemned the holy spirit is nudging you read this book there is lawlessness in your church read papa kumui's book for instance 
maybe he wrote a book on holiness and god is saying read it you need it but i said no 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 no. the church i come from we have all of this and you lose out there was a time during my retreat for one whole day the holy spirit well it started in the night but the holy spirit told me to listen to papa kumui's messages man that thing flogged me from head to toe just the greeting it wasn't even what he was addressing there was a spirit that oozed out of him that i i don't know how many things i repented from, from that night in morning and it was good for me see brothers and sisters you must love the body of christ we are all going to the same heaven there is none that will be created for only you I love the body of Christ. I never discriminate people. I can't see a lady now and say, oh, you are this, you are this. No. See, if you are wounded and there's something wrong in your life, if you are looking for somebody to start you, you have found one. Me, Joshua Selman. I'm not afraid of being controversial. I'm not one of those cowards. One of our ladies years ago was pregnant out of wedlock. You remember her? This thing ruined the lake. It was Christians. I'm not justifying it. Brothers and sisters, how believers stab themselves. They messed up this lady's life. Almost destroyed her life. In an attempt to show that holiness pays. Yes, it does. But what do you do with a soldier who is wounded? Rebels don't come to God. They run away. When a man comes to God, no matter how wounded he is, he's not a rebel. Are we together now? Jesus said, He who does not have any sin should cast the first stone. When you are pointing one hand at people, three fingers are pointing back at you. I remember that lady came, she found a home. That time we used to meet in, in the campus there. Do you know a time would come whenever we are preaching, her baby would just be silent. When we get up and we start praying, she would say, Her baby is kicking. She found love, found acceptance. I used to bless that lady with money every time. She was, because of the shame and the reproach that believers brought to her life, she said she wanted to defer. I said, you are not deferring. You must finish and I'm going to stand with you. I think a Jimmy is a witness and a few people here. I used to walk with that lady with her big stomach. I would walk with her in front of their hostel, Amina, and drop her there. Let anybody think what he wants to think. They say, the way this guy is being careful with this pregnancy, are you sure that whatever you want to think, think it? Are we together now? I will never forget. I, I was so passionate about her issue. The Lord revealed to me the day she would give birth. And I told her, I said, prepare. On a Wednesday, you are going to give birth. That morning, she called in the morning. I was so happy as if it was my child. As she was giving birth, I was already appearing in Shika happily. When she gave birth, I said, I want the child. Where is the child? Are you the father? That's not the issue. I want the child. I held that child. Listen, I prophesied to that child from the depth of my heart. People were looking at me. That child's destiny, parents can choose to mess up, but children don't choose to come give them a right to enjoy a blessed life are we together i have stood by people here in police stations oh so so person is in police station and he said they should talk to you oh this he said you are his pastor he said you are this i said what's his name i said yes i know him oh this person did a and b i said i'm coming and i will go there i will appear there ah, ah. sorry sir are you not the person koinonia yes i'm the one they are our wounded soldiers but we will hold them to a place of victory well i'm not a coward no listen i'm encouraging you this night practice that ministry some of you need to go back to somebody and say look i left you the day i found out that you were drinking but i'm back to tell you i love you i see the way you are struggling to listen to koinonia messages i see how sincerely you have a passion to get back i'm here to help you you do that you will see the power of god in your life i never never have never will 
condemn anybody see let me tell you there is nobody god cannot change don't you sit down and say me i didn't drink i didn't smoke i didn't do this just keep quiet and say lord i give you all the praise during our counseling session you see muslims come people come muslims because they know that i love them and i'm friendly i don't squeeze my face as if as if i'm the person who did this and say why are you here are you not no 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 everybody jesus healed in the bible was not born again but he still healed them i love them i play with their children i'm happy i have blessed the lives of people who today who have no business nothing in return for me please i'm teaching you something that will bless you there are people who cannot come for koinonia right now because of scars in their lives and some of us are the ones who are helping to keep that scars there are roommates who would have won to jesus christ there are fathers and mothers who have done all kinds of things but we are the ones who destroy them exaggerated confrontation i even hear that in many churches it's even an, a thing of embarrassment they come and embarrass the people publicly embarrass the parents misquoting the scripture that says you should rebuke them publicly we don't even understand what god is saying whereas the person who is rebuking the guy for smoking has gold that hidden somewhere he turned it inside the cup and kept it in a fridge you would think he's zobo does zobo foam let's tell ourselves the truth and cry for the mercy of god let me tell you listen i have learned something by experience once you see somebody over talking about a little issue he's a victim of it he, that talk is to create a sense of justification believe what i'm telling you the day jesus christ will come you will be surprised to see those who are really close to him you would think it would be joshua selman with all my ministry regalia god will just go to somebody who you would have thought was an outcast because we who think we are great we are arrogant people and will not come to god but there are those who say lord in iniquity did my mother birth me from beginning i inherited it and i've worked in it have mercy upon me and god says these are the kinds of people who will find it every time i go to god i don't go with a sense of condemnation but brothers and sisters i go with a sense of gratitude ah because i know i know what the mercy of god has done in my life are we together the next time you turn and you see a lady pregnant don't start asking stupid questions you turn and see somebody ah he went for a party and they injured him and he's back to god answering altar call he said but bros now where did you go to that they hit you like this it's over learn to help people i'm not laughing three errors that are stopping the unity of the body i love people i love you whenever you see me rebuke you you know from the depth of your heart that it is out of love i can rebuke you but when you commit the offense i will be there i wrote a song years ago the bandage is larger than the wound i will sing it one day for you i wrote that song to help hurting people i'm concluding jesus gives a story of a samaritan woman right a, a, a good samaritan somebody was beaten by armed robbers are we together a religious person came and passed and looked at him not wanting to be unclean left a pastor came and looked at him and saw it and said no 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 i'm holy and left but then another person came a samaritan and got down on his knees and cleaned him whose wounds have you cleaned see the true picture of fatherhood is the ability to rebuke and yet cover the ability to rebuke and yet guide to tell you no 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 gulda is gulda it's not the way of god however there is a grace that can help you i am willing to help you I will never forget years ago when a lady developed like a bipolar problem she was seeing things she was supposedly praying in tongues for two hours they took her to security office they called her pastor 
he kept giving all kinds of excuses i refused to come the lady i mean she would literally fight with everybody bah, 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 praying supposedly overnight like for two days non-stop i just somebody she doesn't even attend our meetings then somebody who used to attend the meeting called on me i said i'm coming i was at the security office i just got there and they said i should write statement i said for what I'm, allow me to find out what is going on first I will take any embarrassment if it is for you. I will take any embarrassment if it's for the kingdom. Let me be controversial. Misunderstand me. The most important thing is that no man will judge us on that day. When we stand before him, God will... See, let me tell you, the day we stand before God, you will be surprised to see the people who will enter heaven. And you will be surprised to see those who will be said, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You will see somebody you have concluded upon who later when you died gave his life to christ and god used him who would have said saul will be the one to bless people who would have said so listen live your life with eternity in view do not be afraid to stand for the kingdom do not be a man of values when people are bleeding be there we are rounding up god told me if we can address these three errors there will be no reason for criticism again there will be no reason for anything strange there are people who wait for men of god to fall that's why prayer department and the rest pray for i mean they are waiting they are waiting somebody who does not know anything about finances goes to write an article about a pastor and says somebody gave him money what is your business if you don't understand kingdom finances you don't get up and now begin to talk and run your mouth and say all kinds of rubbish oh the tv ministry he's doing he's doing it out of this and that and that let somebody just appear now and just put a baby and say exposed joshua selman has a three-year-old this beautiful lady is his daughter and he will say you know uh, my conscience the same you the same you who is looking at me right now the same you who is receiving miracles the same you who is a man of god with envelopes and kneeling down they were the same people who said crucify him Please reduce it to keys. Let's sing one song and close this night. There's a song in my spirit. Play, 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 Mike. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all We'll see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I have a version. When we all get to heaven, what a day of surprises that will be. Because you will see people you never felt will make heaven. You see people who you look at them and think because they are controversial they are not of god you will see them stand at the gates of heaven and you will watch the way the gates will be shot against many who stand with their self-righteousness killing the body of christ rejoiner when you read his book the final quest it was a revelation of the operation of the body of christ please read the book if you can get it i read it years ago and it blessed me and when he was shown the vision of the body of christ he saw so many people climbing a ladder and he saw others pulling them down and they were christians who were pulling their soldiers he found out that whenever any believer had an issue many people came and were stabbing him with a knife and they were all christians may it never be through your life that somebody will miss heaven because something about an exaggerated i'm not teaching you to not confront error but it in itself is an error
to move beyond certain things and destroy a man's ministry a prophet went to a church and saw by revelation that a man of God's wife was sleeping with somebody in the church what will a wise prophet do will you not come down after the meeting you call the woman and say mama please don't be offended this is what I saw I can pray with you I can help you he just carried his big mouth and ran it in the church and said what I'm seeing is a surprise well, I did that, that, and that. Who is by the name ABC? People clapped. Ah, mama, you got it right. Who is by the name so so person? They clapped. They said, Two of you, you know what you are doing. And he just tore that ministry into two. You think that's the will of God? Rise up, let's pray. Jesus prayed a prayer and said that they may be one. Three prayer points, according to the teaching, very quickly and we're done lift your hands to heaven and thank him for this word the word will bless you in the day you need it this word came from the lord for you and by extension for the body of christ there are people listening to this message right now and he's healing them literally literally healing them give him thanks say father thank you for your word every moment in your presence is a time of transformation every time in your presence is a time of change you have given me wisdom you have given me grace first prayer point and i like you to pray seriously i like you to pray and say lord every revelation in my life that is an error that is already leading me the way of apostasy reveal it to me and bring me back on track lift your voice and pray please pray Make sure you are praying inside and all the overflows. Make sure you are praying. Everything I have held on to, everything I have held on to, capable of destroying me, doctrines of demons, doctrines of demons, persuasions that look spiritual but are not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom. Open my eyes, O oh God. Open my eyes, O oh God, so that I will not keep the body of Christ in bondage. Doctrines that have kept the church poor. Doctrines that have kept the church conscious of demons and spirits as against the strength and the might of Christ. Doctrines that have made the church powerless. Doctrines that have caused men to depend on the strength of the flesh as against the power of the cross. Lord, take it away from my life. Bring me to the way everlasting. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I like you to pray and say, Lord, where I need to speak out for you, I receive grace to not let my ego make me watch others in error go to hell when I can address it. That 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 self-destructive attitude of keeping my ego and allowing somebody go to hell that state of indifference i don't want to be controversial so i rather allow people in their error than to stand and teach truth lift your voice and say help me help me help me give me grace and give me courage are you praying koinonia grace and courage grace and courage the bible says we all like sheep have turned astray every man has gone his own way grace 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 to draw people away from the gates of hell unashamedly regardless of the controversy that it will bring in your life regardless of how misunderstood you will be pray Hallelujah. 
before we take the third prayer point hold your hands together we're going to sing that song though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ lift your voice and sing it one time I don't care whether you are Catholic, Anglican, Mountain of Fire, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, we may differ in different things, but it is very clear that the intention of the kingdom is that we may be one. Oh, we are many, we are one body, we are one body in Christ. For the last time now, lift your voice and sing. Though we are many, yes, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, Put such love for the body of Christ in me. Not love for koinonia. Love for the body of Christ. Every denomination, regardless of what I agree with or what I disagree with, every denomination, regardless of what I believe about their doctrines or not, is too small a reason, too small a reason to fight too small a reason to tear down people pray lord i love your body every denomination regardless of their errors regardless of the areas of imperfections they may have made mistakes they may hold on to ideologies i do not agree with but i love the body of christ i love the body of christ my God is not only the God of Koinonia, He is the God of the body. And I'm telling you, ministries may make mistakes. We may all have our shortcomings. But the church is marching on. Regardless of the mistakes, regardless of the imperfections, the church is marching on. And the Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. We are going to pray in one minute. Pray for every denomination, every pastor, and every wounded soldier in the body. I like you to say, Lord, I repent from adding to their pain. It was with my mouth I spread the news that destroyed them. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I pray. I pray. The same mouth I want to use to prophesy and speak to destinies i have torn down pastors torn down churches torn down men of god destroyed wounded soldiers lift your voice and pray and say lord i repent in sackcloth and ashes i repent in sackcloth and ashes are you praying i love your body i will stand with those who are wounded i will stand with those who are abused like the good samaritan when others are condemning them and running away i will reach out with a helping hand i will stake my reputation to see people restored back hallelujah listen let me tell you something we're rounding up if there is anyone here who has an issue that you think you are dying with 
and you need an ear to listen to i want to tell you trust us you can trust this ministry to be able to help you without condemning you are we together now those who can help people in the body of christ are rare there are those who help but when they help they will be the same people to destroy you i don't know how many people's issues are here every day sometimes the people are ashamed to open up because they are wondering when they open up and then when they open up i just look at them and i smile and say you don't know when i started hearing this kind of issue let me tell you there is nothing the ears can hear that i've not heard so while people are coming and opening up they are saying oh, man of god i don't know how to stand i say please don't waste my time i'm here to help you and then whenever they say what they think is the big issue i just smile and i say there is a bam in gilead and i can see the healing i can see the refreshing i want to live my life helping people up to love god and walk in the way of righteousness and in the power of the cross yes i will do it a thousand times i will do it please let me tell you i know that we don't have counseling sessions but feel free i will give you a listening ear and i will talk to you and i don't no matter what it is there is a way out don't ever let anybody conclude on you hallelujah I'm going to do an altar call our time is up but i want everybody to just stand in respect of this altar call two altar calls in one please no moving around inside and outside i'm going to make an altar call right now two categories of people just join quickly when i make the first group of people are those who have never seen a reason to place their trust in jesus and to give their hearts to him you may have been coming to churches or you may even have been coming out for altar calls but the truth is you don't know what you are doing you don't know the name of what you are doing it's been destroying your life the lord has been telling you that jesus is the way listen please win this war tonight and say man of god you just preached a message that has blessed me you've walked in the greatest apostasy is the deviation from the love of christ the refusal to accept that love is apostasy indeed it will end you misery in this life and eternal damnation in the life to come those category of people the second category of people listen are those who were once walking in the things of the lord but for some reason past habits past things things you thought you had overcome you didn't even know when they resurfaced in your life and you are dying slowly and you are saying i need to run to the lord it doesn't have to be anything immoral it could be anything anger you thought you had given it up now that god is lifting you you are already seeing it manifest full blue you have lost friends and you are wrong. you want to run to jesus please our time is up i'll just count one to five these two categories of people just run to jesus and begin to talk to him right now one two very fast don't wait for anybody to come you are the first there are so many people inside and outside make your way please very quickly celebrate them they are coming win that war in your heart run to jesus like your life depends on it because it does three my soul longs and even faints for you please keep coming tonight is a night of victory my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears, trembling and tears of morning to the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, longing for you. I need you, I need you, nothing, no place, no one else will do, I need you, I need you, for you satisfy the longing inside. Da, 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 da. 
Lift your voice to Jesus and begin to talk to him. And say, Jesus, I come home genuinely. Please guide the children. Somebody should talk to them so that they know what we're doing and participate. Please talk, talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord, it's over. I come to totally surrender everything to you. And everyone in the congregation be praying for yourself because we all have something to pray about. Don't just stand watching them. Those in front, talk to Jesus, your maker. Some of you, you've given your life to Christ, but some of you are seeing things, traces of things that you need urgent attention from the throne. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. There are many of you who are crying. You see, one of the things you find in Koinonia, we may not be perfect people, but we are sincere people. We will not withhold the truth from you but we will not use it to kill you there is everyone you see here had a time there are people who should be outside here but they are sitting there or you took the courage to come some of you are already filled with the holy spirit you love jesus but you are coming as a rededication to to give god space to deal with certain things I salute your courage there are people who are here for the first time you've been dilly darling around the things of God but you're saying no I mean it seriously today hallelujah please I give you one minute if, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you to come and join them please come and join them quickly I want to pray for you our time is gone but I still sense this heaviness in my spirit that there are people who are supposed to come and join them there's no point being afraid we just preached about this there's no point going back to your home carrying the burden going back a sinner you know your name is not in the book of life if the trumpet sounds today you know heaven is not for you for sure there's no point sitting in the congregation brothers and sisters let's tell ourselves the truth and not play games with ourselves we're in the presence of the almighty god when you come before god you are serious the bible says let us lay aside every weight hallelujah please lift your hands in one minute all those in front some of you are crying i want you to know that jesus is in this place just for you and he's here to help you i will lead all of you through the same prayer although some of you have already made this prayer don't worry you can still just pray it with us say after me lord jesus you are the only one who can help me and save me I've tried my strength I've tried my intellect I've tried my strength but I've seen that it cannot help me I come to you tonight just as I am I surrender my life to you take my life and use it for your glory I receive eternal life say it into my spirit from tonight i'm a child of god the life of god is in me say this after me the voice of condemnation the voice of guilt the voice of accusation is hereby silenced by the blood of jesus i am a new person I am a changed person Satan take everything that belongs to you and live my life forever in the name of Jesus my name is in the book of life I have the assurance of salvation hallelujah keep your hands lifted and let me pray for you father these ones have declared your lordship over their lives I'm praying for those who are fighting habits and traits that are antichrist. The spirit that sponsors that operation lives their life forever. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for all of you under the sound of my voice. This is the beginning of a new day in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and a big congratulations. Clean your tears. Those of you who are crying. It's a new beginning. Hallelujah. Now listen. Please two things you will do for me very quickly. The Bible says, they that be planted, not they that visit the house of God. 
when you are planted in the house of God is the place of your spiritual nourishment so be planted in the house of God and watch God build you number two um, there are people there are ushers who will be waving their hands I like you to politely follow them be nice to them they will have your details the purpose is so that we can reach you pray for you and follow you up your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus please follow them appreciate them koinonia as they go ushers direct them let them know where 